Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So it's nice to see you guys. Uh, are we already complete or we are still waiting for our um, classmates? So it's nice to see uh, Joanna. Welcome back. So the last time, I think you were on, uh, on a road trip and uh, you submitted your um, presentation recording. So we're going to post that so everyone can watch your report. So welcome back. Are you back in Manila? Yes, I am back in Manila, Doc. Thank you, Paul. Okay. And uh, we would like to also welcome uh, Haiji San, uh, Favor Barika Laka. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Are you there? Yes, Paul, I'm here. Good okay. Afternoon. So welcome, welcome. Uh, it's nice to have you here. We're Pleasure. still uh, waiting for your classmates. Hello, uh, Miss Marjorie. Hello, sir. <laughs> How are you? Are you uh, currently in the team building or? Uh, no, sir. At home po. <laughs> sa, sa, sa katapusan pa. Sa ah, okay. Mismo. End of. Uh, it will be fun. Um, yes. We, had, uh, we were one of the first team. Ah, you're included in the first team. Pa. And uh, it was uh, the height of the typhoon. Pa -el. Yes. So... <laughs> So yeah. it's, it's only typhoon, and we're yeah. team building, so we're stronger mm -hmm. than the typhoon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Hello, Christian June and uh, Melanie Rayo, uh, Ma Marella, uh, Janelle. I think uh, we're still waiting for our uh, numbers of students, and uh, let's just give some time. Um. They might be uh, on their way, uh, opening their online computer. So um, I just uh, prepared some of the dates. Uh, later on, we're going to make an announcement. Uh, we have a, a little adjustment. Um, the original uh, professor, Dr. Mansano, I know he already uh, gave the schedule ahead of time. But because of unforeseen uh, events such as the typhoon, long weekend, and uh, graduate um, orientation. These are the three things that uh, affected our meeting. So in lieu of that, we are going to adjust our schedule accordingly. Okay? Um, but don't worry. Uh, I will still give you a synchronous in the month of November. Now, our end of class will be December 10. Uh, so that means... Uh, you have, uh, right now, you should be starting your concept paper. To those who would like to uh, learn more about the concept paper, you can um, watch our link from the October 15 class. I think that's already um, posted in our group chat. For those who are not part of the group chat, I will email the link to you. Uh, to make sure, I will email the link to everyone. Now, if you still have questions with regards to your project or your um, paper, maybe we can have a, uh, a special meeting. It can be done during uh, a Saturday, a synchronous, so everyone will be available. But uh, basically, uh, everything is already there. Uh, I also posted an example of how your project paper or your concept paper would look like. But if you need my help, I'm more than willing to help you. I will just set uh, a, a, a schedule which is uh, convenient to everyone or convenient to you. So uh, do we have the number? I think uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I think we're around 15. So we'll just wait for a few minutes. Now, while waiting, is there any questions, concern, or you want to share anything, or um, or you want, or uh, who among you missed your report on your scheduled report? Is, this, is there anyone here, or no. yes, sir, we we uh, missed our report. Me, who else? Uh, uh, the, lovely and Ravinder, sir. We should yes. be reporting last October 29. Yes. <laughs> but yes, unfortunately, sir. with the long weekend, it was yes. affected. So that's the reason why we're going to tweak our... Uh, thank you, uh, Architect March. We're going to tweak. Because uh, at the time when it was um, designed, 
uh, no one knows exactly if that date or uh, that weekend will be declared as a holiday. But it turned out it was declared holiday, so it was uh, good for everyone. And uh, we'll just adjust in our end so we can accommodate the missed uh, dates and uh, presentation. So hello, uh, Archie. Good afternoon to you. Uh, it's nice to see you again online. Good afternoon, now, sir. Um, there's a little uh, adjustment at our end in terms of recording our classes. Um, we are instructed to have 20 gig for our uh, memory for a Google link. So that means, in my case, what I'm using right now is still Google Meet. Unfortunately, I haven't uh, adjusted my uh, memory to down to 20 gig. So that's the reason why I cannot record this session. However, we are actually live in YouTube, in my YouTube. So I'll simply uh, give you the live stream URL so you can watch this uh, in YouTube. So all you have to do is uh, I'll share the URL to everyone and you can uh, watch this session again as reference. So right now we are still uh, waiting for our uh, ICT to, um, to give us uh, a proper number of uh, memory, especially uh, in our case, the administration, we need more than 20 gig, uh, especially in uh, our college HTM, we are undergoing accreditation so we need more than 20 gig so whenever we save class through google link it eats up our memory so now since we are in my account more than 20 gig google meet is not allowing me to uh, record this session uh using google meet so instead this will course through in my youtube so it's still the same. In fact, uh, um, it's better than this. This arrangement is better. Uh, I don't have to download the file and upload again. This goes directly to the YouTube. The downside only is that uh, we're currently live. So uh, there might be some outsiders who might uh, search operations management or production management or MBA 209, then they will discover that we are currently having our class. So that's that's the, that's the fun side. Who knows, uh, someone might be watching. But uh, I think everyone uh, is, uh, I think most of us are, were here already. Uh, hello, Ravender, how are you doing? Okay. So let me just show you uh, my screen, and uh, this is the our plan for the next few weeks. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to uh, call my attention. So today, November 5, we are um, again meeting after a long weekend. I think uh, the last time we met was October 15, and that was like two weeks ago. And it's understandable due to uh, our long weekend, typhoon, and um, occasion. Okay, so for the agenda, wait, someone's opening. Okay, uh, Sarah. Sarah, Sarah, hello, Sarah. Yes, Can you hear us? Sarah, you're not using your, your Tua email? Ah, oh, ano? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, you're already in. Kasi nakalag-in, sir. <laughs> Kasalanan kasi ng Google, ano eh, no? Hindi nakatuwa email. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. So, as I uh, mentioned, this would be our game plan for the next few weeks. Okay. So, let's play. Uh, let's pay attention. I want everyone to be flexible on this uh, arrangement. Okay. Um, as mentioned by Architect Marge, uh, the original schedule for the reporters is uh, on on October 29. But unfortunately, or fortunately, it was a long weekend. So we have to tweak our schedule. Today is November 5. So there are two things that we can do. We can uh, ask the reporters who are scheduled on October 29 to report now if they are ready. 
Or we can ask uh, the reporters who are scheduled on November 12 to report today if they can report or if your report is now available. So let us uh, discuss that in a while. Uh, my original agenda, let's be flexible. The first three topics were scheduled on October 29. Site selection, people and work system by Lovely and Lavender, respectively. Layout design by Arc architect of Zoom, inventory for dependent and independent uh, by Sara. So let me first ask the three reporters, uh, are you ready today or would you like to have your schedule next week? I'm ready, sir. Okay, so that's architect Marge. How about Sara? Uh, Sara, are sir, you available? I'm sorry. Sir, nawawala yung laptop ko eh. <laughs> Hindi ko alam kung saan ko nalapag. Nako, uh, laptop. That's the, that's the reason why you have to have a uh, backup copy sa cloud. Let me ask Lovely okay. and Ravendeer, are you ready for today or you would like to reschedule next week? Lovely? Is Miss Lovely here? I can't see. I, I, I'm in the presentation mode, so I don't see uh, the participants right now in the inside the room. Can anyone uh, check if Miss Lovely is in is in our class right now, or she's not yet here? She's not yet here. Okay. Okay. How about uh, Ravendir? Are you available, or can you report today? Um, I think no, sir. We need to reschedule. Okay, so it's only architect of Zoom. So that's for the first part. Let me ask the second part of the reporters. Just in time and supply chain management by uh, Lisa and Donna, project scheduling by Melanie, and maintenance management by June. Is any one of you ready today? Uh, sir, ako, ako po. Pwede po akong mag-report today. Uh, sorry, I don't, I don't see your name. Uh, what's your name? <laughs> Melanie, sir. Okay, Melanie. Okay, thank you, Miss Melanie. Project scheduling. Uh, how about June or Lisa or Donna? Are, are they here or not yet? Uh, can anyone check if uh, Lisa or Donna or June, are, are they yes, here? Doctor, I'm here. Okay, Lisa, um, can, you can, you, can you present right now or you want to have your schedule next week? I have finished, but I think my PowerPoint not good. Ah, okay. <laughs> so you want it next week? Yeah, you would like okay. to request, right? Is that correct? Yeah, okay. Okay. So today we're going to have two reporters, which is okay. So we are going to, to change our schedule. So for today, November 5, um, let me check. Uh, lovely and Ravin the year will be next week. November 12th. Now, if you get to see our schedule, uh, you notice that uh, the original plan was we do synchronous and then the next week asynchronous. This is where we need a, an adjustment for the month of November since we missed our class for two weeks or even three. The graduation orienta uh, the graduate orientation, which was held last, last Saturday, so we did that class. Um, the second was um, the long weekend, which was October 29. And then another one was scheduled asynchronous. So those were the weeks that we missed out. So for the month of November, it uh, we're going to have asynchronous today. Next week, we are going to have a, a synchronous class again. And November 19, we are going to have another synchronous. As promised, by the end of November, we are going to have a synchronous, or it depends if we need another synchronous. If you look at our schedule, we only have one, two, three, four, five, six meetings left. So that's very, very uh, fast. Um, considering uh, November 5 is uh, ongoing right now, we only have five to go. Now, for the last two for the last two meetings, it was scheduled for 
preparation of your final paper. So doc does design this as uh, asynchronous. But if you want us to meet to help you do your paper, we can we can also schedule uh, semi asynchronous asynchronous. If uh, what what I mean by that is uh, to those who need more assistance in your paper, we can have December three as your uh, consultation if if you need it. And then on December ten, uh, that this is the time that we submit your concept paper. Maybe if we still have time, uh, since we only have like 15 students, maybe you can just have like five, 10 minutes presentation of your concept paper. Very, very short. Uh, it's like uh, abstract. Let's see if we can uh, have an agreement. Okay, for November 5, uh, it will be Architect March for today. So thank you, ma'am. So we will uh, move the reporters, sele site selection. selection by uh, lovely and we see here next week okay now um, today it will be architect and then uh, Melanie what's your uh, presentation project scheduling right yes Bob. Okay, so let us put the two ladies here. And then uh, Melanie will be here. Okay. And the rest, you are expected to, um, to have your report next week. Okay, uh, namely, okay. Just in time, it will be Lisa and Donna, okay. Maintenance management, inventory will be Sarah. Okay, so this is how our presentation will look like. Now, to our uh, international students, you will be given a schedule on November 19. So later on, after our class, which we will end uh, a little bit early for today, since there are only two reporters, I want to uh, request all our all my international students to stay put. I want to make sure that um, every single one of you um, will be will, will be assigned a topic. Okay, so so this is how our the rest of our class would look like. November 12, as mentioned, we are going to meet again. November 19, allotted for our international uh, students to report their presentation. And to those who missed their paper or report, this is the time, November 19, synchronous. November 26, we will see if we need uh, another synchronous or if everything is in order, we can afford to have a synchronous for your preparation, for your paper, for your concept paper. And then December 3 will be, uh, um, it will be a schedule for consultation for your uh, paper. And then on December 10, final paper presentation. Now, I don't want to announce this yet, but I'm looking at uh, December 3 uh, to make this more interesting. I am in talks with Rex Bookstore and uh, I know the owners. And I was just wondering if we can have a, a field trip in Rex um, Rex uh, bookstore. Rex bookstore is located in uh, in Santo Domingo Church, so it's very close to Trinity E. Rodriguez. It's along Quezon City. Now it's very very interesting for a 50, 60 year old company to see how successful they are because of the product product and operations management that they are using. We will see their story. We will see the development and improvement. They, we will see how they use just in time, TQM, all the combination presentations that were presented in class, you will see it in actual. So uh, tentative, don't quote me yet. Whether it's November 26, December 3, there might be a possible field trip 
in this class. Now, to those who are not available, obviously due to the location, this will be recorded. This will be um, not not live, but recorded, and it will be posted in our website. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Miss Lovely. How are you doing? Okay, naman po. Uh, so, Lovely, one quick question. Are you ready on your uh, topic assigned or would you like to have it next week? Sir, can I have it next week na lang po? Okay. So, it will be scheduled on November 12th. So, okay. to, for today, uh, let us start our uh, class proper. Uh, we're going to have two interesting um, topic, layout and project scheduling. Now, since we already identified the two subjects, we are now going to identify what will be our learning objectives. So today, layout design and project scheduling. Let me just... For the layout design, the reporter will give us what are the layout types used in operations. So uh, I think this is a very appropriate for uh, architect Marge. As an architect, uh, op uh, layout design is very, very important. I won't uh, tell... Uh, more about it, but I will just leave uh, the report to architect Marge. She designed one of our laboratory and uh, maybe, I don't know if she's gonna share that um, part because uh, the design was so uh, to make it more efficient and effective because the place is actually limited space. So you would see, we will be wondering how McDonald's, Jollibee can come up with such an efficient, effective operations by having a very, very limited layout, especially the, if you get to see their kitchen, very, very small. But because of proper layout, -ing, they, were, they can work effectively. In fact, later on, I will uh, ask you to watch a movie in Netflix. It's called The Founder, okay? I want you to see that movie. If you haven't seen it yet, I think it is appropriate for this topic, layout design. There's this part where the, the original founders design how the kitchen of McDonald's should be. And at the same time, given the limited space, they actually uh, measure it. From, prepara from preparation of burger to giving or finished product, it should be within less than one minute. So it's very interesting how they did that. And up to now, they're actually doing it. Uh, but right now, there's a little bit delayed because uh, I think uh, they're using just-in-time uh, approach. So those these are the learning objectives for layout design. I want you to know about the layout types used in operations. Another learning objectives, what are the product-oriented layout and process-oriented layout? As you can see, uh, this subject covers two things, production and operation or process. Uh, the, the YouTube that I provided before, our, during our first meeting, we discussed the... Uh, Operation strategy, quality, productivity, delivery. These three elements is present whether you are in into pro product or uh, production or into service. So same as layout design. What are the design for production and for service or process layout? Another learning exciting objectives for our reporter is how should each layout be designed in detail that's very interesting because uh you as an entrepreneur as a manager you are always operating in a very limited resources so when it comes to layout design it is critical to know how should each layout be designed and number four, how does the layout design affect production and operation? You know, a little, uh, a slight miscalculated measurement of a table 
or uh, any of those uh, elements in layout will have an effect in terms of your production and operation. Now, as a reporter, uh, Architect March can also add more learning objectives. Uh, she can uh, feel, uh, feel free to add other learning objectives, but this will be the four critical items. Now, for the next leader, which will be uh, project scheduling, uh, she will focus on the following. What are the project management techniques applied by firms? You know, whether you are in uh, production, service, there's always a project management involved. In the academe, uh, I'm actually uh, in the academe, in the College of Hospitality and Tourism Management, there's always a project management. Uh, whenever there's a, a, um, a project or an event, we call it project management. So it's very exciting. Uh, Melanie will also discuss how do firms benefit from project scheduling. Again, uh, as mentioned, as a company, you have limited resources. We have limited manpower. So this is where the project scheduling comes into play. And last, but definitely not the least, the learning objective would be what are the activities done in a project scheduling process. So both reporters, both interesting topics will be discussing this one. And as you understand product and operation management, these two critical subjects or topics must be understood by everyone, okay? So let me just give the floor to, uh, who would like to go first? Pares dalawang M, Marge or Melanie? <laughs> Who would like to uh, uh, okay go for lang. It's okay, okay. with me, yes. Okay, so, uh, uh, so let me just give the cloud to Miss uh, Marge, and um, please reserve your Q&A. Uh, we'll do our Q&A after the reporter uh, is done with her presentation. And then uh, to my uh, dear students, if you want to add more inputs with, uh, with related to our presentation or topics, you may do so. But let us reserve our comments, Q questions after the presenters is done. Okay? So, Ma'am Marge, you have the floor. I will give you the cloud. Let me just close my camera and I will now close my mic. Go ahead, Ma'am. Uh, can can you see my screen, everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. But uh, it's more on the what, what, oh. what's that mode? It's not uh, presentation. Oh, first, okay, uh, for a while. How about that, sir? Okay. Can you see it? Uh, it's still the same. Still the same for a while. While uh, waiting, uh, let me ask Miss Blanco. Miss Blanco, can you uh, upload your video? Although the video is already with me, uh, just to make sure so they can also watch your presentation. You also have a very good presentation as well. I am Marge. Go to slideshow. Uh, slideshow. Then to my upper left. And then uh, once uh, you they click the slideshow, and then. Uh, you can now uh, select from beginning.
Hello, sir. Can you see my screen already? Ah, uh, wait. Um, uh, still. Uh, this one. Yeah, slideshow. Yeah, perfect, okay. perfect. Okay. You you have okay. the right size. Go okay. ahead, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Fong, for the introduction. And good afternoon, everyone. So I'll be reporting about the layout design uh, for the moment. So as, uh, as discussed by Dr. Fong, uh, our learning objectives, we need to answer these questions. What are the layout types in operation? What are the product-oriented layout and process-oriented layout? How should each layout be designed in details? And number four, how does the layout design affect production and operation? So for an effective uh, operation management, proper facility layout is important in achieving effective use of workers and, workers and equipment. So here is a sample of one of my uh, project, uh, recent project, uh, maybe blurry lang yung, yung lines, but uh, each lines represent uh, something uh, on each drawing. So there are dimensions and there are furniture layout. Uh, as you can see, before we come up to this kind of uh, plan, there is a collaboration between the owner and the and the architect or the designer. So there is a um, there is a system we are following, like the schematic design phase, wherein the interrelationship diagrams are being done, wherein the 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 discussion between the owner, what 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 does they need about. Uh, a certain project is being discussed and the architect or the designer is re uh, represented to a uh, design or what we call in our subject the layout so in in architecture in engineering we call it design okay. so layout is one of the key decision that determines the long run efficiency of the operation so it, this is very vital in any business establishment to really go through the the layout design of every uh, every uh, business okay so layout has a strategic implication because it establishes an organization competitive priorities in regards to capacity processes flexibility and cost as well as quality of work life customers contact and image so this is one of the renders of an office that is being built in, in Iloilo City. Okay. So, layout design must consider how to achieve the following. Number one, higher utilization of space, equipment, and people. So, we need to utilize the space so we can come up on something that is very um, effective on the process or on the uh, uh, daily works of the offices. So, so you can see on this drawing, uh, the first uh, the first drawing on the left shows that uh, the space is being utilized. There is a low partition wherein uh, everyone is segregated on 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 something that he has a space or or the managers has space. The ordinary workers has has its space. There is a corridor. And it, as you can see, that it's only a limited space now, but uh, the design is already established uh, and the, the um, partitions are being uh, located on, on, on those areas to separate each offices or each department from one another. So number two, improve flow of information, materials, and people. This is a sample of a... Uh, uh, this is a sample of a, um, uh, what do you call this? Uh, uh, ano ba dyan, sir? <laughs> Which one? The blue one? The factory? blue one. It is a factory, factory sir. No? Yeah, so it, yes. It's a production. It's a sample of a production. So the layout is very in line with each uh, other. So we nakita nyo naman. The aisle is straightened and every, everyone can see everybody. This is a kind of a production uh, layout. So number three, uh, layout design also needs to uh, improve employee morale and safer working condition. This is very important in the design for every establishment that the, the user of the building or the structure or the space should, should be kept uh, safe and in good working condition. So it should be ventilated, well-lighted, 
So when not just uh, well ventilated, ventilated, but uh, natural lighting and natural air circulation, especially nowadays during this pandemic, we should really consider on those matters. And number uh, four, the improved customer client interaction. So this is very uh, important also that uh, good relationship with the customer by the employees or the staff. Uh, we need to consider this in the layout design. So also we need to consider flexibility. What whatever the layout is now, it will need to change. Especially during this pandemic, what we've done in uh, Trinity University of Asia, some of our the, some of the classrooms are converted into laboratories. Some classroom need to. Um, uh, need to re uh, relocate some uh, furnitures and fixtures to to follow a certain protocol. So here in this picture, as you can see, the chairs uh, and uh, the chairs are being uh, separated to each other, and at the same time, it can still go back on the layout, uh, the regular layout with with the teacher on the front, or yeah. so it should be a flexible design. So here are the types of layout. Uh, layout decision includes the best placement of machines, office and desk, or service centers. An effective layout facilitates the flow of materials, the flow of people, and the information within and between the areas. Uh, number one, uh, the office layout. Here, as you can see, the position it positions the worker, their equipment, and spaces and offices to provide for the movement of the information. Uh, the the attached drawing, as you can see, is a, an office layout wherein there are cubicles, uh, rooms with doors, a conference uh, room, also a pantry, a mini uh, conference room at the right side. Uh, so you can see that. So that's an example of an office layout. Number two, the retail layout, it's allocate display space and rebound, re response to customer behavior. Uh, everyone naman siguro have been to uh, SM or Robinson's or whatever uh, retail layout. Uh, there is an enough space for the customer to roam around. So uh, there are separate section, express, uh, uh, as you can see on the drawing, there are uh, girls apparel, the infant and toddler, or if it's a three, three level, a building like that, the usual layout of SM department store, the ground floor or the basement are for a certain or specific department. The, the like the like the men's apparel, the sporting goods, uh, family shoe marting, mga ganon. So uh, on the retail layout, yeah, it's really important that customers can roam around the area so everyone can see the displays of the items being sold. So number three, warehouse layout. Yeah, it addresses trades off between space and material handling. So in warehouse layout, there is a storage space, a reception wherein the dealings are being made. There are the pickings and the shipping and the loading and unloading for the um, distribution of the of the goods or the products on different spaces uh, on different places. Uh, number four, the fixed position layout. This addresses the layout requirement of large bulky projects such as ships and buildings. So there is a, a specific uh, project site wherein they deliver or or the raw materials or the or the goods are being delivered on this specific uh, project site. So number five, this will be uh, uh, this is the process oriented layout which I will further discuss later. This deals with the low volume, high variety production, uh, also called a uh, job shop or intermittent production. This is a pro process oriented layout. So I'll be discussing this later. So let's jump to on the number six, the work sales layout. Uh, arranges machinery and equipment to focus on production of a single product or group of related product. So as you can see, the, the workers and the equipments are in one area or one room wherein uh, the, the layout is uh, being, um, being utilized to, to come up to a, certain, um, uh, to a certain outcome or a certain pro product. So within this area, within the area, it... Uh, the workers are or the personnel do the job in a specific uh, uh, in a, in a uh, group related product okay 
So lastly, the product-oriented layout uh, seeks the best personnel and machine utilization in repetitive or continuous production. This will be further uh, discussed then as part of the uh, learning objective. So the raw materials or the customers uh, will go to the station one, station two, station three, and station four uh, with, with the inputs of the material or labor and then to the finished product or the finished item. So uh, I just attach one of the uh, pictures and example of uh, establishment uh, from the book. So for an office that locate workers requiring frequent contact close to one another. An example is of this is the Allstate Insurance Microsoft Corporation. For the retail exposed customer to higher margin items, an example of this, if locally, we all know that SM and Robinsons. For the warehouse storage, balance low cost storage with low cost material handling, example of this is the Federal Mogul Warehouse, the Gap Distribution Center. Uh, for the project or fixed position, uh, the objective of this is for uh, move materials to the limited storage area around the site. Uh, the example of this is Ingall Shipbuilding Corporation, Trump Plaza, Pitchboard Airport. Uh, job shop or process-oriented, manage varied materials flow for each product. Uh, example, the Arnold Palmer Hospital, uh, Hack, uh, Hard Rock Cafe, and Olive Garden. Uh, Work cell product families. Uh, objective of this is to identify a product family, build teams, cross train team members, and examples so the Hallmark cards, wheel coach ambulance. And for the repetitive, continuous product oriented, equalize the task time of each workstation. Example of this is the Sony TV assembly line or the Toyota Scion. Okay. So to, uh, to further discuss the process oriented layout. Uh, okay, item number five. Uh, the process-oriented layout is otherwise called as a functional layout or job shop layout. It engages assembling mutually in one section based leading to their operational kind. So this process layout is handiness for inspection and supervision. Uh, it, in the, in, it's a service pattern in which processes of a compa comparable nature of function are set mutually. So sample of these are uh, hospital, banks, auto repair, libraries, and universities, and even yung mga tinatawag natin kulungan o yung mga penitentiary. It's a, it's a uh, kind of a process-oriented layout um, design. So uh, how should it be designed in detail? So the process layout is a supple layout, or in meaning it's a um, free-flowing, parang uh, you can... Parang within an area, you can uh, room around with, with the layout. It's an outstanding, outstanding for short to average manufacture amount. It is exceptional for middle to lofty productivity dissimilarity. With its use, the worker should be accomplished and competent. It has a high work in process. Its a main benefit is to low production rate. Initial investment in process layout is low. Diverse amount of machine consumption may be attained in process layout as, appli as appliance is not devoted to a cell creation. It has a great suppleness and extent of growth survive in this layout. Uh, how does the layout design affects production and operation? Uh, the process layout gives the little litness, which means the firm has the skill to grip a multiplicity multiplicity of this dispensation desire then it helps its cause every so often that common recent tools used perhaps not as much of expensive to acquire a fewer pricey and easier to preserve than dedicated it gives motivation which means employees in this type of layout will most likely a diversity of errands on numerous machines as opposed to the boredom of performing a recurring chores on a meeting line so a process also pursued to the ma manager to utilize type of individual incentive system. Then it's used to protect the system because there are numerous machine as accessible process layout are not mainly susceptible to tools. Break. Okay. Yeah. So this is an example of a process oriented layout, a surgery ER. Uh, as you can see, there is a blue line and the red line. Uh, there is a patient A, patient B. So 
two patients came came uh, came on the emergency room. The the patient A with a broken leg will go to the ER, ER triage triage room. So the ER triage will uh, will will let the patient go to the radiology or the X-ray room before going to the surgery room and before to the ER beds. No, so siempre kailangan yun ng gamot. They need to provide the pharmacy. So there is an interrelationship within the pharmacy and the ER bed and the surgery. So be, 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 uh, after doing the surgery uh, or, or uh, healing the patient, then go, it will go out to the process or the billing exit. Uh, not the same with the, the patient B with erratic heart pacemaker. So as you can see, the red line directly go to the surgery before uh, so from the surgery, the pharmacy, wherein the needed medis medication or medicine uh, will uh, have a relationship within the surgery. We call it an uh, interrelationship diagram. Eh. We use this in the designing. We use the interrelationship di diagram so we can um, make a pattern which room should be accessible to this room or to that room or is there a relationship between two rooms or we can separate it. So... In this kind of diagram, as you can see, uh, when the patient B is already um, uh, uh, done, done the surgery, that's the time he can come to the ER beds. And afterwards, from the ER bed, and it, it, it's already uh, stable, they can have the billing or the exit. Same with the hospital. Same with the hospital setting. So for the product oriented uh, product oriented layout uh, as for this as a further discussion uh, product oriented layout are organized around product or families of similar high volume low variety products repetitive production and continuous production use product layout so there is a rep repetitive action on this uh, kind of layout so the assumptions are that the volume is adequate for high equipment utilization. Product demand is stable enough to justify high investment in specialized equipment. So we, the, this kind of layout needing a specialized equipment. So product in standardized or approaching a phase of its life cycle that justify investment in specialized equipment. Number four, supplies of raw materials and com components are adequate and of uniform quality. So adequately standardized to ensure that they will work with the specialized equi equipment. In a product-oriented layout, to answer how should it be designed in details, resources are arranged sequentially based on the routine of the product. In theory, this sequential layout allows the entire process to be laid out in a straight line, which at time may be totally dedicated to the production of only one product or product version. The flow of the line can then be subdivided so that labor and equipment are utilized smoothly throughout the operation. So in this kind of product-oriented layout, you can see that there is a starting point and an end point to deliver a product. No? So... How should it be designed in this detail? In a product-oriented layout, resources are arranged subsequently based on the written... Ay, for a while. Na, na, okay. There are two types of product-oriented layout. Uh, there are the fabrication and the assembly line. So the fabrication, where this is where we build the components such as automobile tires or metal parts of a refrigerator on a series of machines. And after a while, after doing the fabrication or building the components, uh, we have the assembly line. Uh, we put the fabricated parts together as a series of workstation. So, so both are both are repetitive process. So there is a repeti rep repetition of process, and in both cases, the line must be balanced. That is, the time spent to the perform work on one machine must equal on the balance the time spent to perform the work on the next machine in the fabrication line. Just as the time spent at one workstation by one assembly line employee must balance the time spent at the next workstation by the next employee. So there is a continuity of work to produce a certain product. So uh, how does the layout design affect the production and operation? There is uh, an advantages and disadvantages on this kind of uh, layout. 
The main advantages of product-oriented layout are the low variable cost per unit usually associated with high volume standardized products. Number two, low material handling costs. Number three, reduced work in process inventories. Number four, easier training and supervision. And number five, rapid uh, uh, output. Uh, sorry, this is a rapid output. So for the disadvantages of product layout, number one, the high volume required because of the large investment needed to establish the process. Number two, work stoppage of uh, stoppage at any one point can tie up the whole operation. So pagka nahinto siya on, on a certain, uh, certain group or a certain area, uh, there, will be, um, uh, there will be an effect on the succeeding uh, phase of the uh, of the of the production number three the process flexibility necessary for a variety of products and production rates can be a challenge okay so for the uh, example as discussed earlier by dr po uh, mcdonald's hamburger assembly line as you can see on the picture uh, there is a time lapse the time the task time and the task so number one uh uh, number one is a uh, uh, customer order with an video screen. So there is a customer ordering for a burger. So there is a there is a um, a bun toasting. Uh, kumbaga number two yon uh, eleven second. So they need to finish the bun toasting for eleven second. And afterwards, on step three, there is a task of twenty second in assembling or the, all the condiments. Number five. And, all, and number four, again, wrapping of patty with bonds, uh, accumulating of 14 seconds. And afterwards, a heated, uh, it is a heated cabinet for the grilled patty. So there is a specific equipment needed for each uh, area of production. And number five, order pickup immediately to keep it fresh. So they need their product to be uh, quality, quality. Uh, uh, heated uh, on a landing pad. So number six, the customer service or the or where in the order of payments are being made. Point of sale or POS terminal that tracks its order payment time, cashier, etc. Okay. So that's all, sir. Uh, the book reference for this is the operation management and production and operation management and operation management by Stevenson. So thank, thank you. you very much very good uh, presentation so let's open our uh, discussion and q and a yes for uh, any questions any questions uh, anyone would like to uh, ask for clarification or maybe would like to uh, have some of their uh, sharing <laughs> layouting anyone anyone i'll just close my uh, camera okay anyone would like to ask very uh, comprehensive yung presentation ni, ni architect. What or maybe what are your takeaways from the presentation? Uh, Ma Marge, uh, saan daw po kayo makokontak pag magpapakot at magpapadesign? <laughs> Thank you. Well, by oras lang, after work ng office hours po. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, well, actually, sir, I'm, uh, oh, practicing architect talaga ako. So after TNT, yun, yun, meron, you have meron. to uh, go in online kasi yes. uh, nakapila kami. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, but uh, yes, architect is uh, one of a uh, good uh, talaga. Kasi like I mentioned kanina, uh, she designed one of our laboratories and very critical ang uh, layouting kasi uh our siguro let me show you what how it looks like no? yes yeah, so there is a budget constraint yun yes. yung time so, I mean, yun, kailangan matapos ka agad so. not to mention you're <laughs> talking to a customer that yes. uh, they might uh, well, they want something that's very impossible with yes. regards to the budget and to the availability of the place yes sir. so you have to you, you, we need <laughs> to to discuss it properly to the client so they will not expect that oh this is our budget why is it like that like that so you need to come up on something that uh, both of you will decide that the project can push through sir yes um anyone would like to ask 
Um, you know, one thing that I pick up regarding sa layout uh, while uh, architect is discussing, she showed some of the pictures, yung uh, mga lines, colors. Very, very interesting because in a layout, uh, ano, in a layout design, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, architect, kasi yes, this yeah. is more on your field. But in terms of operations management, ang layout uh, design is you make the invincible visible. Yes, sir. So we're, we're using a broken line, staggered yes. line, oh, oh, bold oh. lines. So oh, oh. that's how we we interpret, that's how the engineers and the other architects can uh, can understand what you're drawing, what what you want them to know about the design. Yes. Kasi magkamali ka lang ng lagay ng design, akala nila, ay, under the table ba yan? Bakit kasi hindi, <laughs> but, ano, hindi kasi broken lines. <laughs> yes. And and very important, ha, because broken lines, uh, they represent ano, a process. Yes, uh, sir. So, when you do a layout design, uh, you have to make sure that one of the, this is just my takeaway, uh, like for instance, in, in, a, in a certain room, you uh, you have to make, siguro I'll term it as make the invincible visible. So that's where the broken lines, this is where you, you try to see the patterns, and the relationship and of the, the rooms. Exactly, yes. relationships. Uh, one thing that nakita ko sa poster or sa slide kanina was the, what is the relationship in the emergency room, in the hospital? Yes, um, because when you, uh, to start with, you don't, it's it's really blank and you don't get to see what is on, what is going and ongoing. Yes. So layouting is really uh, something that is very, very critical when it comes to operations management yes yes sir uh oh uh in, in your case uh, in your in your uh, situation maybe you want to see or um how is your layout design maybe let me uh change the gear um you know if you go to google office do you see how their office layout looks like anyway it's very um Unconventional, unlike sa mga other offices. No partition, sir. No, uh, mm. no partition. Free, free flowing. The the design is free flowing. Everyone can yes. have an interaction. Yes, and and uh, that that's uh, something that is uh, what is. Oh, wait, let me just get some picture. I think if you've seen the movie, the internship. Uh, you would see um, there would be a different layout, like what uh, Ma Marge mentioned. It's uh, open space. There's no partition. Um, the the exchange the ventilation. Of oh, yes, the, the 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 ventilation. There is a natural lighting coming inside the office. Well, that that depends on the discussion of the owner. If that's yes. the kind of layout they wanted to do with their office, if that's the concept they are they are they wanted to bring into the design layout. Can you imagine if you have this kind of layout in your office? No. <laughs> yes, mother. Yeah, no. Uh, it's something uh, open. Oh, so it's a good study. Maybe it can be your concept paper. Mm. Uh, having this kind of uh, atmosphere, or how would you measure productivity with this kind of layout design? Oh, yeah, no. You have another mm -hmm. proposed topic now, but uh, you know. Um, if you get to see, they, they have big spaces, uh, a place where they can talk, exchange ideas. Yes, and relax. colorful, sir. No? You, you know, that's another they thing use, that I noticed. Uh, kind of colors that are, that, that are unique on, on a certain furniture or fixtures. Yes. And one note, one thing that, uh, Mom March mentioned, Architect March is the, the people, diba? Dapat, uh, uh, can you imagine if you have this um, layout in the office? Um, they are motivated to to work. Uh, in fact, uh, so Google, the but they have free snacks, um, green, different colors. Uh, 
I think it was Pixar and Disney who started this kind of uh, day out office. You know, so because they have a requirement to be imaginative, sir. Eh? That is yeah. the, 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 the space is playful. Then they can imagine things. There are greens, and yun nga, there's a proper lightings and colors are being uh, introduced in every room. Yeah, that's a good point. Huh? So let me, in in that case, let me ask this question to 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 everyone. Given that uh, what doc, what uh, Mark uh, architect Mark mentioned, if you look at the layout of your office or layout where you're working, how do you uh, evaluate? How would you describe? the current layout of your uh, work or in your uh, situation? Is it conducive to work? And after listening to this presentation, what would be your takeaways and how would you, how would you um, improve, improve your layout design? Or, your, or is it currently just right? Maybe uh, some of you would like to share. Siguro, let's ask, uh, yeah, sige, uh, Christian, June, uh, maybe you can give us a, a brief background of your layout and how would you interpret it and combine it with the report of uh, Architect Obsum? Uh, good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Doc. Uh, particular in the government center, sir, particular NIA, sir, uh, we have a layout which is symmetrical in nature then usually tambak yung mesa namin sir ng mga papeles so hindi hindi katulad dun sa google na office which is appealing yung kwa niya, nature which is maganda tsaka colorful so, depende din yata sa layout ng, kasi old, old government center na yun sa amin. So, yun pa rin yung mukha niya since 50 years in existence na yung corporation namin. So, mayroon namang improvement sa ibang department na nire-request namin for renovation. But, sad, sadly, dito sa amin sa corporate planning services, walang oras kasi eh. Or, hindi ini schedule pa lang kasi busy yung opisina namin kasi more frontliner kami dito sa mostly on budget preparation at saka project uh, proposal so yun lang ang experience ko dito sa NIA so malaking impact din na maganda yung environment mo particularly na yung working space mo kasi kung tambak naman yung papilis mo tapos hindi organize yung lugar mo parang hindi ka din fit din ma gusto mo bang magtrabaho kasi tambak na naman yung mesa mo puro papilis so mga ganong scenario doc Tsaka meron naman kami, kasi ISO na din kami din, Doc. So, mm. usually dapat malinis yung work, working space mo. Tsaka efficient yung kan mo. Pero yun nga, Doc. Hindi maiwasan, Doc, na hindi mo ma-comply-comply yung ISO standard. Kasi paminsan, pag tambak tawa, tambak talaga. Hindi, 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 meron tayong... Uh, operations manual na sinusunod pero hindi natin may iwasan na mayroon tayong ibang priority doc eh. which is alam mo naman siya national government uh, mayroong sariling prioritization eh kahit naka pipeline na siya so yun na ang system dito sa amin dito sa pag iba ibang administration kasi doc eh. so hindi natin alam pag ibang administrator iba naman yung direction eh. yes yun, yun po doc well, uh, sometimes uh, culture plays a role, a big part in culture. Um, but that would be discussed in a later part. But thank you for sharing, uh, Sir Christian. Anyone else would like to share? Uh, interesting, uh, the reporter also mentioned about office layout, retail layout, warehouse. So there's a lot of uh, layout that was being presented. And um, 
if you go to Robinson's SM, they were able to utilize the space, the planning, and it really amazes me. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I went to the block, and if you have time, please do visit SM North Edsa. Not that I'm endorsing, but I am really amazed how they do the layout. If you go to, um, uh, it's one of the old building, but what interests me is there's a new uh, store in SM North Edsa. It's about yung bump car. It's like, uh, not bump car, but it's a, uh, it's a, it's a two level uh go kart and it is located inside the building and you know i don't know how they did it uh, architect march but if you look at the layout of sm it's built for retail built for yes, sir. Uh, but i was i was just amazed that uh you know i didn't even notice the construction but they mm -hmm. are now housing a new go kart business yes two levels two level business uh, how, how do how do they do that mom march uh, actually i've been to sm din kasi ah, okay, okay. Okay. so ah, okay. I'm, I'm from the ano, engineering of sm mm -hmm. uh sm talaga is very innovative uh they don't stop on a certain uh what is uso lang so mm -hmm. they look look on something that is appealing to the public that is why they go. Uh, there are people, or the marketing uh, people, are going around the world to see what is apl applicable to the culture of the Filipinos. So, and they always wanted to be the first to introduce something new to the uh, consumers, to the ABC consumers of the Philippines. That is why. Uh, that's that's not a new thing for uh, for Shumar to. That is why they have this. Uh, they they are the prime. For when it comes to uh, when it comes to um, uh, uh, commercial buildings, no, they can develop. Kunyari, that that specific uh, parking space is not. Um, uh, kumbaga, hindi siya kumikita, sir. They they are thinking of something that is viable to the younger age, di ba, sir, or the teenagers. The go kart, uh, as I can see, is the 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 clients for that kind of. Uh, um, uh, product is uh, the younger age, the bus, sir. Mm -hmm. This is very appealing. That's how SM doing doing the marketing on 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 every space that they have. That kaya nga sir, di, di ba even the the walls? Wala kang makikita sa showmart na walang signage. Mm, yes, <laughs> because yes. It's, oh, nga, it no? gains, yeah, it gains um rental eh. It gains rental, even the under the stair, even the railings of the elevator, the escalators, everything. Everything is payable. <laughs> that, that, yeah. that, that's a very good point. Uh, you would see how layout uh, design plays uh, in a real estate. And it's the case of SM, yes. where every single square meter is being uh, utilized. Yes. Sir. And uh, considering that property, and how fast SM can convert it, no? Uh, that's one of their competitive advantage. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> you just tell them what size you need, they'll give it to you as long as you are able to pay. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Oh, so, SM is very innovative. Uh, even during this pandemic, they have created something new and hmm. always uh, presenting the consumer something new to, to avail. <laughs> Actually, Tama uh, Kandun Architect, whenever there's a new player coming in the Philippines, whether it's already available in SM, Mega Mall, or I remember uh, Panda Express. Uh, I'm a big fan of Panda Express in the US. And SM was the first one who introduced Panda Express in the Philippines, which is in, the, in uh, SM uh, Mega Mall. And if you've seen Mega Mall, it's like, what, 20, 30 years, uh, year old building. Yes, but it yes, keeps sir. on innovating. It keeps on uh, the sizes. The sizes, yes. It's actually I I handled SM Mega Mall at mm. the time. Mm -hmm. uh, wala pa sir yung gitna no na structure yes. natin no. Yung, yes, yes. Yung bago ko umalis. So talaga nagi innovate ang SM on structure, um, and spaces. They develop spaces. If if that kind of space is not uh, viable anymore, they will convert it on something new and viable to the public that's how they market their space and so 
So that's one of the good uh, case example of yes. what play out in, in action. Everyone knows SM, but uh, the way they uh, do their operations is uh, critical in layout design. And uh, they really know how to use... Uh, even another good example would be... Uh, uh, Mall of Asia in uh, that that's a reclaimed area, right? Yes, sir. So the, 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 the initial design for that is six story mall, but oh, because so. of the study, yun nga, sir, binabasha into three levels na lang po. But three levels that is, uh, you know, um, still viable even on the top floor, yes, sir. See, and uh, that's a, that's a, that's a good uh, case case in the sense. Now, uh, anyone, any questions? Siguro I'll call three people, uh, three students before we close the topic ng uh, layouting. Maybe they can give their questions or insights uh, to develop lifelong learning. I would like to practice this exercise of asking questions. What do you learn from this uh, report? personal learning and how would you apply it in real life so let me ask first uh, miss joanna blanco and then it will uh, to follow by uh, mr favor laka and then our third person would be miss melanie rayo so any uh, thoughts regarding this topic so let's start with you, Ms. Blanco, if you can open your camera so you can be acknowledged. Hello, Doc. And, um, for me, uh, another uh, natutunan ako dun sa topic is importante pa rin yung, um, yung layout ng office para mas maging motivated yung um, employees. And mas maging productive yung employees to work. In in your in your in your uh, case, Miss Blanco, do you consider that uh, the current layout design is uh, appropriate, or are there any designs after learning architects' uh, presentation? There are some areas needs for improvement. This is uh, according uh, to your. Yeah, for me, since sa office namin is um, up, okay naman siya kasi it has a natural sunlight. And yung um, desk namin, we have two desks each for employees. So, madaling makatrabaho. Hindi kami yung mas, hindi siksikan. By the way, uh, thank you, Miss Blanco. Uh, architect, even the air cons are considered layout design, right? Yes, sir. It is considered on the layout design in sir. So the number of people, and can you imagine? It is computed. It is computed. <laughs> computed. <laughs> and, and, and you might be surprised, guys. The temperature of male and female are different. Uh, so when they do computation, they will ask, like for instance, in a factory, uh, assuming that aircon would be uh, part of the computation, they will ask, Will this be male or female? Uh, because, um, like for instance, uh, if someone is pregnant in the office, they have the certain temperature. They they have like uh, they they will be more. Uh, they would prefer cooler uh, environment. So, these are the things that you need to compute. And uh, again, um, make the invisible visible. If you are uh, the operation manager, it entails cost. So how much would it cost if I get inverter, regular inverter? How many people? Uh, how many girls? How many guys? So that's part of it and uh, very interesting. So according to Ms. Blanco, her perspective in terms of uh, at least her workplace is conducive right now. And then Ms. Blanco, what do you think would be your lifelong lesson from, from this paper or this report? What are your... Uh, practical takeaway take um i believe na ma important pa rin yung um, layout if i invest ng um isang company to be productive yes i, I agree with you talagang it's really important uh, anyone anything else that you want to add miss blanco before we turn to the next uh uh 
classmate, Mr. Laka? Um, wala na, Doc. Thank you. Okay. So, thank you. So, let's uh, hear from uh, Mr. Favor Laka. What would be your practical uh, application or learnings from the report or presentation? Go ahead, sir. Uh, good day, everyone. Um, from the, the report, I understood um, some things from the report. Um, prior to this time, I did not have much knowledge on architecture or like stuff like that. So, um, so I don't really know if I can speak so much on it, but uh, yes, it was not something so complex. So I got some some knowledge from it. And you were asking also if it's, you were asking about like the workplace of people and if like the setup is applicable. Right. Uh, right now I'm not working anywhere, so <laughs> I cannot exactly like try to um, compare or something mm -hmm. or point out what's need, what needs to be um, changed or something like that. So yeah, that, that's about it. But uh the the report was self-explanatory i understood it thank you mr laka at least you realize <laughs> the importance of layout design right so the next time yes, yes. the next time you uh, think about business or operations management one should consider layout design and uh, the impacts yeah, it's very important very important very important. thank you mr laka that's a very good uh, uh point uh thank you because not everyone really knows layout a uh, design even myself uh, i would like to learn more about it we're fortunate that we have an architect in the house and uh, yeah. through her experience she could explain in a practical layman's manner so, but uh, uh it's a good thing that uh, she used the layman's terms or else we might be lost in translation Confused. <laughs> Confused. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> good thing good thing uh because uh, an architect, they, they have a different way of uh, terms and terminologies. So uh, if, you do, if you don't study architect or they don't know their language, then we might end up uh, losing what they're saying. But uh, again, thank you, Miss uh, Architect, for uh, giving this so simple that we can everyone can understand, even if you don't have any background in, uh, in, in this uh, field. So thank you, Mr. Laka. Uh, who's the other one? Um, who I called Miss uh, Melanie. Melanie, go ahead. What are your uh, takeaways? I, yes, po, Doc. Uh, one of the most important factor po para i consider ang isang business is the layout design. Yes. Uh, para po magin productive yung mga workers mm. at saka ano pa ba, sir? Sa amin kasi, sir, yung current office namin is actually not an, an office it's a townhouse that we converted it into an office so mm -hmm. i think it's not on office style so medyo magulo sir hindi siya ganun ka workable or uh, hindi siya ganun ka ano as office dahil kwarto kwarto siya sir mm -hmm. dahil nga townhouse it was a house it's not an office actually uh, don't don't worry. Uh, if you look at my office, it's not even an office. <laughs> <I'm the architect. laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's true. Uh, layout design. I agree with you, Miss Melanie. That's uh, very important, and um, one should really understand. Uh, and you have to discuss this with your um, contractor or engineer, so you would they can deliver what you. Uh, would like to specify. So thank you, Miss Melanie. Now, before we turn uh, turn to a new paper or a new topic, there are two things that I want you to do to to remember this lay this uh, layout design. The first one is uh, I would like you to watch a movie. So uh, it's called Our, the Founder. It can be I think it's still available in Netflix. So it's not a, uh, it's not really a, uh, uh, a new story. It's a, it's a story about McDonald's and the relationship with its owners, founders, real estate layout, and they are still using the same concept. I want you to to watch this movie and pay attention 
the development, the transition of the layout design. And another one, uh, this is a very short article, which is very, very relevant. And uh, I'm really glad that architect mentioned about hospital. I want you to, uh, I'm, I'm going to send a copy to our page or link. This uh, this is a art, very short article, which was uh, printed 2018. And let me just uh, zoom in. Look how the architecture of hospitals affect health outcomes. Very, very interesting. Uh, I won't tell what the article is all about, but when you, when, when you consider operations management, sometimes people tend to overlook. And those areas that they need to focus on are the layouts, the buildings, the rooms. So this article talks about what exactly uh, architect Obsum discussed earlier. This is only like three pages. Uh, I just want you to read. No reaction paper, but this is to complement the topic that we discuss. And hopefully, you develop a lifelong learning by understanding the importance of layout design and how it affects operations management. Because at the end of the day, what we want is to have an effective and efficient operations so we can be more productive. We can utilize our resources. And this is one part on how you can be make sure that everything is in order, OK? So thank you, Architect, for a very good presentation. I would like you to. Um, post your copy of PowerPoint. And if you have notes, please do share with your classmates. I think you, yes, did, a very, you did a very good job in terms of reporting. OK? Now, um, the next reporter is Miss Melanie. Tama ba? Uh, sorry, is it Miss Melanie? Yes, po, Doc. OK, now, can I ask uh, a quick five-minute bio break? So when we so when Melanie starts her presentation, we have one hundred percent attention. Okay. So can we back can we be back at one thirty one, one thirty two? Take a break, make your coffee, grab some sandwich, and let's be back at one thirty two. So let me just uh, have a, a quick countdown so you don't miss our uh, next session. Would that be okay to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead. Take your quick break, and I will uh, do the quick timer.
Okay, we're back. I hope you got a good stretch. So let's give the cloud to our next presenter, uh, Ms. Uh, Melanie. You have the floor. And then again, uh, we'll do the same process. We'll give the reporter uh, ample time for presentation. And then uh, to those who are listening, uh, please prepare some questions. If you have some clarifications or questions and or feel free to add uh, if you might want to uh, uh, share your uh, experience with this um, topic related to Miss Melanie. Again, uh, let's welcome Miss Melanie. Melanie, you have the cloud. Um, go ahead. Okay, po. let me share my screen. Po. Kita niyo po yung screen ko? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Okay. Thank you po. Okay. Uh, I'm Melanie Rayo and I'm going to report project scheduling. So let's first uh, tackle the agenda of this uh, topic. Uh, first, what is project scheduling? And then why is project scheduling important? The third one is different project scheduling techniques and things to consider while creating as schedule and last is how to create an ideal project schedule. Uh, what is project scheduling? A project schedule is a method of communicating what work should be done, which organizational resource, resource or team will do it, and when it should be done. The project sched the schedule should include most of the work involved in completing the work on time. Without a detailed timeline, the project manager cannot communicate the cost and resources essential to the project's completion. Project scheduling is the thorough process of creating a project schedule that includes the project phases, tasks within each stage and dependencies. It considers the skills and resources needed for each activity, the sequence in which the milestone must be completed, the interdependencies and the time required to complete it. Why is project scheduling important? Talking about some of the advantages of the project schedule, uh, first is effective management and communication. A well thought out schedule will outline how a project will be managed from start to end. Uh, it lays a timeline for events, activities, deliverables, objectives, and milestone and when they must be completed. It can serve as the foundation for defining and conveying project success, key performances, indicators, and the roles and duties of individuals on the project team. The second one is the tracking progress. Schedules provide a useful structure for tracking a project's progress over time. Schedules may give crucial feedback on whether the project is progressing according to plan and if it will be finished on time uh, by assessing the status of activities and milestones. Uh, monitoring the schedule can assist the project manager in identifying critical tasks, prospective delays, and options for resolving project issues if necessary. The third one is efficient resource management. Schedules help uh, planning, allocate, motivating, and monitoring of all resources. Productivity and efficiency, whether it's people, equipment, or money. Appropriate resource schedules help in the proper, proper alignment and sequencing of activities and their durations. It ensures that their use is maximized. It also helps in the improvement of continuity and the reductions of expenditures. And also, it helps in accountability. This might involve exchanging information, accomplishing crucial critical tasks on schedule, responding to contractor and customer inquiries during needed testings and various documentations and project reporting types. The next one is the better coordination and focus. Schedules guide regular team meetings to receive and review status report. In addition, 
continuous discussion about individual items or work packages can assist the team in reducing coordination issues and misunderstanding by gaining a more comprehensive view of progress and key implementation challenges and focusing on the effort and energies as they move from one activity to another. Uh, the next one is the financial performance. Scheduling has a significant influence on a project's overall financial, financial success. Uh, significantly, uh, when time limits the usage of resources in the fulfillment of a specific activities, individuals making the schedule must account for both economical and effective utilization of project resources, mainly uh, when they are highly specialized and expensive. It should be remembered that finishing tasks in a short time usually cause more owing to the additional resources that are sometimes required and rush. Furthermore, accurate estimating and planning estimate assist in avoiding extra charges that drive up project prices. Next, it helps in quality control. Schedule helps maintain essential quality components uh, by encouraging project team members to promptly handle complaints, difficulties, and issues consistent with the client's expectations. Uh, by implementing quality control from the start of the project, teams can guarantee that there are no severe difficulties at the end which can delay completion and increase expenses due to rework. Schedules may also inform the quality control team who can assist project managers in identifying and managing risk and identifying and grasping opportunities to speed up work when possible. So these are some of the benefits of project scheduling. And now let us move on to the next topic. What are the various project scheduling techniques? We will discuss like the critical path method or CPM, fast tracking, crashing, simulation and resource optimization. I'm starting with the critical path method. Critical path method is completely mathematical in nature and allows you to compute the longest and shortest project timeline. Uh, let's use an example to grasp this better or to, uh, to understand this better. The project consists of four tasks, A, B, C, and D. Task B and D can begin with job A, is completed while task C is not restricted. It becomes a critical task in the situation since the progress B and D is dependent on it. The job will be sensitive as any delay in its completion will cause the project's overall timeline to be pushed back. On the other hand, task C may be within a flexible timeline because it has no dependencies. In this situation, task C have a float time a job may be extended to a certain point without affecting the entire project. This is how a manager may compute each activity start and end times while keeping the reliance of each task in mind and arriving an exact result. A CPM approach may be used to project tasks when all deliverables and dependencies are known. Next is the fast tracking. Uh, frequently, you will find yourself in a situation where the project is on a tight timeline or is delayed due to internal factors. Uh, managers research and assess the critical route in such scenarios, evaluating the activities that may be done in parallel or overlap. Yeah, it enables them to do many activities simultaneously without compromising the project scope or timeline. A software development project is a real-life example for this. If you need to complete the project quickly, tasks like design and development can be completed concurrently. For example, the development team may begin once the creation of critical has been finalized and authorized. The design team will continue to work on the remaining parts and functionality and in the meantime. On the other hand, fast tracking requires precise planning and monitoring since managers must handle numerous activities simultaneously. Next is the crashing. Uh, crashing is a time compression method that might be difficult to master. Uh, it, it includes allocating, allocating greater resources to certain activities to speed up the project's completion. Uh, for example, let's say you are working on a construction project uh, with two workers. 
uh, one more will be added by your project manager so that they work on the remaining. However, because it adds extra tasks or cooperation and communication with other resources like explaining the work, this may not always work to your advantage. Uh, adding additional work every day and paying overtime to the employee is another approach to using the crashing strategy. However, it can have two consequences cause escalation, uh, the, which might first is harm your income and burn out your team's energy. As a result, crashing can be used when your budget allows it and you have uh, generic resources in hand as a backup. Next is the simulation. Simulation is utilized instead of the critical path technique when project characteristics like deliverables and interdependencies are uncertain. Simulating one or two variables allows you to assess many situations. If the time taken to complete one activity is known, you may change the resources used and observe how it impacts, impacts the finish date. You can arrive at the best fit situation after exploring numerous version. The project manager often uses the Monte Carlo simulation mode. Managers can experiment with multiple val values in instead of assigning a single constant to the unknown variable. It helps them arrive at the best fit estimation or projection and create a concrete project plan. In addition, it forewarns prospective dangers, giving enough time to prepare a contingency plan. Next is resource optimization. The project success is determined by the workforce, talents, and effort. As a result, managers must maximize their talent by tapping into its full potential. At the same time, it's critical to keep their usage under control. The utilization of resources results in decreased productivity and less work done. Overuse, on the other hand, can lead to exhaustion and burnout. This is why managers use a resource optimization strategy when the deadlines are too near, assuming that the project is time sensitive and the deadlines cannot be changed. They will book extra resources to support the vital employee. Resource smoothing is the term for this. If the project's time frame is flexible, managers will start the project based on the abil availability of resource to avoid utilization. This method is known as resource leveling. These two strategies can assist managers in designing timetables compatible with their resources, emotional and, and physical well-being. So these are some of the project scheduling techniques. Uh, let us move on to the next topic and discuss the things to remember while creating a project schedule. How things function and how to make things work better uh, have fascinated project managers. As a result, each project's timeline is created during the planning phase. The following are the methods that are anticipated to be used to schedule a task. First is define the activities. Define activities allows project managers to utilize the work breakdown structure or the WBS and a deliverables diagram to identify and start the required tasks to complete the project on schedule. As a result, they will be aware of the actions that, mis that must be included in the plan. Next is the sequence activities. Uh, it helps to determine the relationship between the project activities. After the sequencing, the next stage is organizing the jobs and, and identifying dependencies. Finish to finish, finish to start, start to start, and start to finish. Then do estimate. The project team has specified the activities and tasks in a breakdown structure. The next step is to decide the best time to execute the project. To create a timetable, you'll need an estimate of what to accomplish, how to do it, and the most crucial element of the equation, how long would, sh would how long should a project uh, take to complete? Next is determine the dependencies. Projects aren't always straightforward. Usually a project cannot begin until the one already in progress has been completed. We call that task dependency. As a result, you will need 
to factor these initiatives into your plan. As project managers, you might follow a technique by keeping track of your calendar to accommodate uh, these associated initiatives, then assign resources. The final step is to assign resources uh, to complete your schedule. It determines which resources you will need to perform the assigned task on time. As a project management team, you must have the appropriate resources and your, and your time must be factored into assignment planning. When you are ready to create a project timeline, acquire input from higher authorities and implement the necessary revisions. Before you execute the project plan, you'll need to estimate it. It will help you compare the anticipated and actual dates of the project. Also, consider the task objectives to help create a timetable. Uh, now, let us move on to our next topic and discuss creating an ideal schedule. First, make a list of the tasks that will be included in the timeline. Uh, for this, refer to the duties listed in the work breakdown structure or the WBS. Next is determine the task interrelationship. Uh, now determine which task must be done before moving on to the next. Determine which task can be completed while others are being met. The, the dependency can be shown using a network diagram, a precedence diagramming approach. Next is assign each task to a specific member of the team. This establishes task ownership, also one of the essential components in a project's eventual success is assigning the appropriate person to the correct assignment. Next is calculate how much work each task will take. Work with individual team members or those with previous project's experience, then estimate and assume level of skills and also document the assumption used while estimating. Next is consider the various factors in creating a schedule that is first constraint of the project, then assumption, following materials lead and lag time delay, and when, where, and how the activity must be completed. The next one is the project risk. Uh, this is the vacations, meetings, debates, staff contacts, or any commitments the team members may have. Uh, next is the staff training. Uh, the next thing to do include a contingency and an anticipated event time reserve in your schedule. A contingency plan is a plan that accounts for random events that might cause a timetable delay. The amount of time contingency to allow is determined by following factors. First is the level of risk that can be tolerated during a post. Second, the thoroughness with which the project has been defined. Next, how successfully will the job be managed? A good rule of thumb for scheduling contingency, contingency is 20%, although a project might contain more or less depending on the criteria. Next is to identify the project's critical path. The necessary route is a project management approach that examine which activities have the least scheduling flexibility that is the most essential and then forecast project length based on those activities. Activities in the critical route cannot be postponed without affecting the project's completion date. So examine techniques for shortening the critical path if it exceeds the, de the decided deadline. Next one is check to determine whether there is a surplus of workers. If team is overworked, find a strategy to level the team to give the appropriate amount of, of work. Actions that could be taken are changing the timetable to make room for the limitations, then make extra resources available for that task. Uh, next is reduce the functions or scope of work, then make any necessary changes to the personal strategy. Something to remember here is that bringing in new employees may speed up the job, but it comes at a cost. Not every group is interchangeable. The new person's skill level may impact the work completion time and quality. Also, contract workers may require extra supervision. Uh, moving on, repeat the steps until you've established a baseline. It is an iterated procedure to develop the project schedule. Next, place the schedule information in a Gantt chart. Create a Gantt chart with tasks, milestones, relationship, 
staff allocated, duration, and work estimates to display the project's comprehensive scheduling. A Gantt chart depicts a, pro a project by illustrating each task as a horizontal bar whose length reflects the amount of time required to finish the activity. Gantt chart may be created using a variety of project management technologies. In, in addition, uh, other formats can be utilized to show schedule information depending on your customer's needs and preferences. So this is about uh, creating an ideal project scheduling. And that's all. Po. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Very uh, uh, direct and uh, very uh, comprehensive. So is there any questions that you want to ask? Or uh, let's give the floor to our uh, students, classmates, Muna. OK, anyone? Go ahead. Uh, don't hesitate to ask questions or if you have any uh, inquiries that you want to ask. Okay, Shukuru, uh, let's hear from Ms. Marella. And then after Ms. Marella, let's hear from uh, Ziang Lin. And then uh, let's give the uh, floor to Mr. Archie or uh, Mr. Basilio. Okay, so let's start with uh, Marella. Any comments, suggestions, or uh, um, takeaway? Uh, hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Wala naman pa akong question, pero yung uh, takeaway ko po dito yung sa importance ng project scheduling. Mm. Na-mention dito yung sa tracking process and sa financial performance. Uh, i Parang i-share ko lang yung experience ko before sa dati kong work. Uh, Nag-work ako in a pharmaceutical company. Yung pinaka nakita kong effect ng project scheduling, parang merong failure na, na parang yung maggawa yung project scheduling. So, yung company ko before is um, sa so marketing kami ng isang uh, food supplement. Then, may sister company kami na manufacturer. Yung product na yun is ini-import pa namin, ini-import pa sa France. So, ang Ang naging problem po is kung hindi ka uh, sobrang importante ng project scheduling sa business kasi uh, ang nangyari po before is hindi parang hindi na plan maigi so nagkaroon po ng delay parang naubos na yung stocks hindi pa naka-order sa France ng ano eh ang manufacturer po na, namin before is sila yung repacker ng product na yon so ang gagawin is ipop magpa-production pa sa France. So, talagang aabutin ng sobrang tagal na time. Plus, um, syempre dadaan pa po sa customs bago pa nila ma-repack dito sa Philippines. So, ang laki po ng impact lalo sa sales kasi since parang mga almost 3 months out of stock yung pro yung product na yun, which is the parang pinaka mabentang product namin before. So, ang laki po ng naging effect kasi 3 months walang product tapos uh, may mga customers kami na nag-switch na ng ibang product since wala, wala po talaga laging tinatanong nila na wala. Then, ang isang naging problem din is nagbayad pa kami ng penalty sa mercury drug kasi yung mercury is parang sinusupplyan namin ng ano. Eh, ang condition po sa mercury is if masusold out, kunyari o order, mag-PTO sila tapos hindi mo po makater yung PO nila is magpe -pen magbabayad ka pa ng penalty ganon eh ang last po um order ng mercury before ganon so ang laki pong impact kaya very important po talaga yung project scheduling lal lagi sa business po yan lang po. that's a very good narrative uh, sharing thank you miss marella uh, how critical project scheduling is if you are delayed in one day then the supply chains, everything will follow. And <clears throat> there's always an opportunity cost whenever you don't sell something, especially if it's uh, uh, the most preferred product ng mga customers. And always remember in business, uh, if your product 
is uh, high or low in terms of switching cost? Is it easier for customer to just replace your product whenever you don't have a uh, stock? So that's one uh, real talk of project scheduling. Very, very uh, true. I agree. So, Miss Marella, given that narrative, what would be your um, lifelong learning about uh, how you view project scheduling in terms of your own uh, perspective? Uh, siguro po. Uh, yung sa uh, before na experience ko, pinaka yung nakita ko pong importance is yung inventory. Tapos yung parang... Since ang nangyari din po kasi doon is hindi matugma yung inventory. Parang out of, wala na pala, paubos na. Then, hindi, so hindi po nakapag-plan. So, dapat parang, uh, um, tawag po dito, uh, dapat naka, may timeline kayo, ev parang every, kunyari, every quarter, napapag-discuss ng company, ganun. Kasi po, uh, yung before, yung dati kong company is a small company lang din naman. So, parang hindi, uh, doon po sila nagkulang siguro sa communication ng ma uh, manufacturing and uh, distributor company. Ganun. Kaya maganda, uh, maayos din po na sana parang yung communication, ganun. part pa din siya ng project scheduling. Yeah, that's correct. Communication, timeline, and of course, you have to look for backups just in case, right? Uh, especially if you uh, deal with customs, there would be some delay, supply chain, uh, there might be some uh, typhoon or natural calamity from the supplier or a con origin of country. So again, uh, you also have to consider the uh, celebration and some of the you know like for instance in our case the philippines we have like easily 12 holidays in a year and uh, whenever there's a holiday there's another way of uh, stopping the work and then that's where it takes effect on the project scheduling i think uh cj is raising his hand go ahead sir you have the floor uh good. Good afternoon, Olit Doc. Uh, Good afternoon, so, sir. Uh, with regards to uh, scheduling, Doc, uh, planning scheduling, uh, in part of construction, it is much important for us as baseline because, mm. Mm. for example, for a construction which we build a, a dam or a facilities which is needed to be used for that duration, uh, 300 days, mm -mm implementation date which you have this uh, critical path which supported with various manpower uh, financial support uh, equipment and activities if you cannot meet that deadline there's a big impact within your resources particularly the the expenses so Malulugi ka. So, at the meantime, meron ding strategy, Doc, na kailangan din magkaroon ka ng kung malapit-lapit na yung deadline, so in, ang layo pa na accomplishment mo, hmm. so magkaroon ka ng catch-up plan. So, That's good. Another one, yes. Dadagdagan mo pa yung equipment, which is based, based on your critical scheduling or uh, based on yung scheduling planning something na Ang output is you can use it within that 300 days implementation. Dadagdaga mo pang equipment para mahabon mo yung accomplishment. Which and is, it gets more expensive, sir, yes, no? Yes, expensive, sir. <laughs> so, Kasi, malaking kwandok eh. Expenses ang kwan. Kung mag-over ka na sa target date mo, eh, which is may katumbas na financial yan, Doc, eh. Yes, uh, yes. So, Kaya particularly sa mga private, okay lang yun, no? Kasi kung mayroong fan, kasi lowest bidder, so pwede pa madagdagan. But sa government, daw laking kwan yun, no? Sa government, laking loss. Kasi uh, particularly sa implementation sa government, hindi lang kami ang over, oversight agency. May iba-ibang pa mga parang 
mga media, mga mm-hmm. congress. So laking impact din yun no, pag hindi mo mga consults. Yung amount ng project mo is worth billion. So yeah. laking risk din yun kasi money speaks dapat doc eh. Kung mayroon kang pinagko ng pera, tumbasan mo din. So set ko lang ng example doc ng mga project namin na worth 13 billion. So it takes 10 years which ang tagal na eh. Yung, yung sa balog-balog na Tarlac doc na area ng mga Aquino. So yan ang laking kwan sa amin doc eh. Uh, dilemma eh. So ngayon kaka-catch up pa kami na yon kasi 10 years pa yung magte-10 years na doc hindi pa tapos yung project eh. Oh, so that's a very good that's a very good example uh, especially with the case of uh, Sir Christian June where the government uh, perspective is uh, being discussed and with this uh, project scheduling uh, every single delay uh, even if you have catch up uh, plan the opportunity cost is already there uh, it's it's uh, Again, time is one of the things that you need to consider, time element. Now, uh, thank you, sir, uh, sir CJ, for sharing. And if you, look at, uh, if you look at around the technology, especially with the, interna- with the I.O. Industry 5.0, uh, there are some uh, apps and uh, devices that will help someone uh, to do the project scheduling. But then again, uh, what what uh, Sir Christian June mentioned, there's always uh, stakeholders involved, right? So in the case of CJ, there's uh, different stakeholders from the government perspective, local, uh, media, uh, society. So Latian, they're, they're all interconnected. So good point. Now let's hear from our uh, Zhang Lin. Zhang Lin, what are your thoughts regarding project scheduling? Uh, Zhang Lin? Are you there? By the way, it's uh, cloudy right now in E. Rodriguez. So if it uh, rains and uh, I get disconnected, just continue the discussion. I'll probably be back uh, ASAP. So I think uh, Zhang Lin is not in the room right now. Maybe we can hear from Mr. Basilio, sir. Go ahead, sir Archie. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Mm, sharing na lang yung akin. Yes, sir. Uh, That's uh, more uh, no, uh, interesting yeah. and important. <laughs> right. So in my line of business, uh, project scheduling is our daily cup of tea, sabi niya. Kasi yes. uh, we, I, ran, I run a lot of projects. Ano. Perfect example. I just, kaya medyo, medyo distant ang dating ko ngayon. <clears throat> Kasi I just recently launched or kicked off uh, the, a project for the DOJ. Mm. So we're aiding the scanning and encoding and digitizing of all the land titles Wow. Nang sa Pilipinas ano. So somebody else is somebody is already doing that. It's a 10-year project, but we're aiding them kasi I think they have a lot of backlogs ano. So it's like almost 2 million titles that we have to do until December. Wow. So how does project scheduling comes in? Ayan. So have you uh, I I hope some here has has already encountered Gantt charts mm-hmm. and yung WBS, yung work breakdown schedule. So, yan yung parang pinaka uh, guide nyo na eh. Pag, uh, when you're running a project, when you do your planning, it's all about schedule. It's not just about money. It's not just about resources. It's not just about the cost or the, the budget. Kasi di ba pag project, it's all about quality, budget, and schedule for in timeline. So, kasi walang, walang kwenta yung dalawang na una kung hindi mo naman kayang ilagay sa schedule or can't put it in a schedule properly. Like in this case, um, planning out to scan, physically scan paper title and encode it in technically 34 Mondays. That's how we, uh, we count it, Mondays. 
So it's not calendar day, so it's Monday. So it's up till December 15 only. So monumental task, pero it's doable as long as uh, your resources are available and your schedule is realistic. Kaya importante siya from the start pa lang ng project plan. So it's applicable din naman na baka kasi iniisip na marami ah, for projects lang pala yung project planning or scheduling and stuff. No, actually can, you can use it in your daily life if you want to. Right? Scheduling yourself on how to manage your time better, how you can graduate MBA while, do, while working <laughs> at the same time <laughs> with a lot of re, uh, requirements being being th thrown at us. Pero <laughs> if you schedule it properly, uh, do your planning properly, matatawid naman siya, di ba na, sir? <laughs> so, yun lang kay, um, what I can share. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, that inspires me to give more projects. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, <wait. laughs> uh, just kidding. Anyway, uh, so basically, that's that's two important uh, things that we need to understand when we talk about uh, op product and operations management. The design and project scheduling. Now, we are not going to leave these two items uh, we are still going to discuss this in the next two, three weeks because all the succeeding topics are interconnected. It's a good thing that uh, our presenters gave a very strong foundation of what um, these entities are. Now, um, just listening to your presentation, uh, I could think of several project or concept papers based from these two topics alone but i would assume that uh, every single one of you will pick a project or concept paper on your topic or something that you're very close to so what i'm gonna do is uh before we end our meeting let me just uh, again reiterate the things that we need to uh, do. Number one, I strongly suggest to watch the founder. So let me just give you a, a quick uh, trailer to those who haven't seen it yet. Very, very interesting. Or or not. Uh, I, I think I don't have a sound clip so you cannot uh, listen or hear the music. But here, that's the trailer. Oh, Archie, you're raising your hand. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, sir. I was just browsing through the messages. I think CJ wants to present. Is that correct? Ah, okay. Uh, Chris, CJ, can you uh, present? What is your topic, CJ? Uh, Doc, yung pinapresent mo kami yung maintenance management. Ako. Ah, okay. Uh, are you... Wait, let me see. Yung nag tech messenger kayo, Doc, na magpe-present kami na yun. Uh, ah, yes, yes, yes. Let me see in our... Maintenance management. Okay. So let me just adjust my uh, topic so I, uh, it will be more updated. So today, maintenance management by CJ will be presented. Okay, Sir CJ, uh, you have the cloud. Uh, we still have more time. So yeah. go ahead and uh, do your presentation. Thank you, Doc. Can you see my slide, Doc and classmates? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Oh. But it's not in a presentation, Anna. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Thank so, you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm going to report to you all the, about maintenance management. 
So I have seven content, which is the introduction, concept of maintenance management, replacement of equipment, concept of reliability, maintenance management system, total productive maintenance, and its key terms. So in a manufacturing organization, maintenance is a function that aims at ensuring that all machines and equipment required for production are operating at their maximum efficiency. It focuses on increasing the effectiveness of a production system, creating a safe work environment, and optimizing overall production costs. Therefore, it is essential for an organization to manage its maintenance activities properly. The concept of maintenance management, which refers to a function in production management that is concerned with keeping the production plant under good operating condition. With maintenance management, it is a systematic process of planning, organizing, and monitoring maintenance activities at optimum cost. Lack of efficiency of machines and equipment directly affects the quality and volume of output produced. Some of the most common problems that take place in a production plant are breakdowns, power outage, shutdowns, and failure of machinery. To resolve all of these problems, and maintain a smooth flow of production, an organization needs to keep an effective maintenance system. In the context of production, maintenance not only is confined to machines or equipment, but also involves the maintenance of land and buildings, regular power and water supply, material handling, and fire prevention. An organization spends nearly 15 to 70 percent of the total production cost for maintenance activities. By doing so, it keeps its work environment much safer for employees and runs a reliable production system. Let us discuss the objectives of maintenance management and types of maintenance in details in the next sections. So here are the objective of maintenance management which is keeping assets in good operating conditions, ensuring the availability of machines and equipment, facilitating a safe environment, preventing wastage, achieving higher operational reliability, and encouraging automation. So here are the, with regards to keeping assets in good operating conditions, it involves preventing machines and equipment from sudden breakdowns, thereby maintaining a smooth flow of production. In ensuring the ability of machines and equipment, it involves keeping machines and equipment at an acceptable performance level so that they can readily be used for production process. Facilitating a safe work environment refers to the main objective of the maintenance ma management. Effective maintenance management prevents industrial accidents that may, may take place due to sudden breakdowns of failures of machines and equipment. This ensures a safe working environment for employees. Preventing wastage implies that any failure or breakdown may lead to unnecessary wastage of valuable resources such as machines, materials, men and time. Timely maintenance of machines and equipment prevents wastage, thereby reducing total cost of an organization. Achieving high operational reliability implies that maintenance makes the production system more reliable by keeping assets readily available for the side operations. This improves the operational efficiency of a production plan. Encouraging automation implies that efficient maintenance management reduces manual inspection work. Maintenance management also helps in keeping an uninterrupted flows, flow of operations. In this way, maintenance promotes automation in the production system. So there are two types of maintenance, the planned maintenance and the unplanned maintenance. 
under the plan maintenance there are also a sub sub type which is the prevented maintenance and corrective maintenance while unplanned maintenance is are the emergency maintenance and breakdown maintenance So plan maintenance is a type of maintenance which maintenance activities are predetermined within a time-bound schedule. These activities are performed in the way they have been planned when the actual production takes place. Plan maintenance follows a particular work cycle where planning, scheduling, executing, recording, analyzing, and controlling. So these are usually the particular work cycle in the plan maintenance. Under the plan maintenance, which is the preventive maintenance, involves planning maintenance activities in anticipation of failures that may take place when the actual production starts. In preventive maintenance, work is performed on routine basis irrespective of whether the functionality or performance of a machine or equipment is degraded. The main objective of prevented maintenance are to reduce failures and ensure consistent performance of machines and equipment. The common activities performed under preventive maintenance are regular inspection, cleaning, oiling, and repairing. Preventive maintenance is subdivided into two parts, which is the running maintenance and the shutdown maintenance. Under the running maintenance, prevented actions are performed while a plant is running. For example, inspecting and replicating a machine while it is working. While shutdown maintenance is, a plant is shut down to perform maintenance activities as to prevent failure when it, while it is running. For example, repairing or replacing a machine with when it is not working. Corrective maintenance is refers to a form of maintenance that is performed under a failure or fault has taken place. As a matter of fact, all conditions cannot be foreseen. Every failure cannot be prevented by performing prevented maintenance activities. All the prevented maintenance activities reduce the likelihood of failures to a remarkable extent. Certain problems may take place during the production process. Corrective maintenance aims at resolving these problems to restore machines and equipment back to their acceptable working condition. Unplanned maintenance is a type of maintenance that is not planned in advance. It has two types, which is the emergency maintenance and the breakdown maintenance. Emergency maintenance involves performing maintenance for problems that are urgent to be resolved. However, all, of, all, ki all kind of failures in a production plant are regarded to be urgent. Thus, this, they should be resolved as soon as possible. Emergency maintenance is performed for failures that are unforeseen or cannot be anticipated. While breakdown maintenance, it involves performing maintenance for problems that can be anticipated. However, maintenance activities for these problems cannot be planned. This is because an, organi an organization cannot ascertain how and when this type of problems would take place in the plan. Placement of equipment. A manufacturing organization uses various types of machines and equipment for producing the final output. These machines and equipment are subject to depreciation in due course of time. Besides this, these machines and equipment also run under the list of obsolescence. obsolescence a machine or equipment usually becomes obsolete when a new and improved technology is introduced in the market. In this way, the dynamic business scenario may anytime raise the need of replacement of machines and equipment irrespective of their current operational condition. To achieve a cost advantage and strengthen its competitive position in the market, 
an organization needs to implement the latest technology. However, it is not always possible for an organization to replace the existing machines and equipment since it incurs in the course huge cost, time, and efforts of the organization. Therefore, before making any decisions to relate, related to the replacement of machines and equipment, an organization needs to perform replacement analysis and understand the factors responsible for such replacement. There are factors responsible for replacement. One is the technological factors. Uh, these factors are called uncountable factors, which depreciation of machines and equipment, invention of advanced technology, inadequacy of the existing machines and equipment due to the size of work, time of operation, reliability of usage, quality of output, or consumption of power, requirement of auxiliary operations, need for automation, safety of operations, performance issues in terms of speed and accuracy. Another factor responsible for replacement is the cost factor, which is the refers to the factors that are under the control of manufacturing organization to a certain extent that are delay in production costs due to change, economic advantage of replacement, quality improvement resulting in economic benefit, lesser maintenance costs and space occupied with the replaced machinery, expected economic durability of the new machine, performance issues in terms of speed and accuracy, the amount of investment required to install new machinery. Replacement analysis. Replacement analysis involves estimating the total cost associated with the replacement and compare it with the overall benefits to be derived after replacement. Uh, different organizations apply different approach for replacement analysis. Uh, here are some of the common approaches of replacement as analysis. The minimum and annual cost approach refers to an approach in which replacement decisions are taken based on the lowest annual operating and capital cost. The annual capital cost of an organization involves differentiation and interest charge during a year. On the other hand, annual operating cost includes wage paid to workforce, power consumption, repair and maintenance, and material losses. Here are the examples for the such uh, annual cost with the help of an example uh, i will show you an example about minimum annual cost approach uh, example the existing of machine of a manufacturing plant was installed five years back the machine is less than its satisfactory performance thus it is to be replaced by a new one the value of the existing machine the books in account is 18,000. According to the expert, the machine has an estimated serviceable life of three years. The market value of the machine is estimated to be 15,000 as of now. The new machine would cost $50,000 to the organization with an estimated serviceable life of 10 years. As an advantage over the existing machine, the new one can be operated by unskilled workers as well. Moreover, the new machine would have no scrap value at the end of its serviceable life. The organization is ready to accept 12% return on investment. The annual operating cost for the two machines is as follows. So, the power consumption of the existing machine is 100 compared to the new machine, which is 40 while the maintenance cost for the existing is 3000 while from the new machine is 1200 and the material losses is 300 and the new machine is cost 40 so to compare the annual capital operating cost for the existing machine 
uh, the tone hole out cost is 97 compared to the new machines which is 9600 so it is clear that the given calculation that the sum of annual capital cost is higher for the existing machine as compared to that of, of, as compared to that of the new machine therefore the existing machine should be replaced according to the minimum annual cost method so here is the another approach which is the barnes approach so it refers to an approach that is used to analyze the replacement decision for machines and equipment this approach was given by professor r m barnes this approach is particularly useful for taking decisions under the situation with the existing and new equipment both have a short estimated working life so here is the formula so next is the mappe approach which is the it was developed by a group of experts working at material and allied products institute uh, using this approach an organization compares the rate of return of the proposed replacement with that of the existing machines and equipment this approach is based on assumption that replacement decision should be taken on the basis of immediate returns as distant forecast as not very re reliable while performing replacement analysis using the MAPI approach an organization needs to undertake the following steps first you must calculate the net investment then second estimating the net return of investment and third is finding out the MAPI urgency reach which as shown in the below the formula which is MAPI urgency rate is net return on investment divided by net investment times 100. So by determining the MAPI urgency rate it, it becomes easier for an organization to take practical replacement decision the greater the MAPI rate, the higher is the requirement for replacement. It should be noted that the calculation of net return of investment is affected by the method used for calculating depreciation. To ensure the reliability of this approach, separate MAPI charts can be prepared to identify the effects of different methods of calculating of depreciation. So we talk about systematic equipment replacement program so as discussed earlier replacement analysis involves comparing various financial costs and benefits to do so an organization establishes a set of policies and produces procedures related to replacement decision these policies and procedures are collective called systematic equipment replacement program the following are the steps undertaken by organization while developing systematic replacement program. We're determining the need of equipment re replacement, deciding the objective replacement, selecting equipment and implementing it, and lastly is following up. Advantage of systematic equipment replacement program. Uh, it reduces costs associated with equipment replacement, increases the capacity of a manufacturing plant, improves the quality of final output, helps an organization to take more feasible replacement decisions, and lastly, it keeps a regular check for the need of replacement. Concept of reliability. There are four major determinants of reliability. These are quality, availability, efficiency, and safety of operations. In, in a manufacturing organization, a machine or equipment is called reliable if it has the aforementioned features. Reliability engineering is associated with determining the ability of machines of equipment to perform its required function under a specific condition at a particular point in time 
it involves estimating the probability of failures or breakdowns that may take place in the future by applying various engineering tools and techniques. These tools are the life cycle costing, reliability centered maintenance, failure mode and effective analysis, early equipment management and design, the reliability of machines and equipment can be ensured in the long term only if its maintenance is done on a regular basis. Therefore, reliability of a machine or equipment is based on how efficiently an organization performs its maintenance activities. However, the maintenance of machines and equipment incurs high cost for an organization. Therefore, one of the major objectives of maintenance program is to ensure assure the reliability of machines and equipment here are next slide shows the importance of aspects of maintenance to ensure the reliability of machines and equipment so these are the formula which are the mean time between failure which refers to the averaging time between consecutive failures of equipment mtbf can be calculated with the help of the following formula. So mean time between failures is the total running time of the equipment divided by the number of failures from being available. So MTBF represents how quickly a machine or equipment can be restored to its desired operating condition after a failure. So therefore, MTF is directly proportional to reliability of equipment. So another concept is the mean time to repair. So these are the formula. The next is the rate of maintenance action, which refers to the number of maintenance action performed on a specific machine or equipment within an hour. The rate of maintenance is supposed to be directly related to the maintainability of equipment. So next also is the criteria of satisfactory performance, which involves determining performance standards for the operations of a machine or equipment. The marginal testing, which refers to the technique or of identifying potential failures in the operation of a machine or equipment so that the production process does get hampered. So the primary objective of maintenance management system is to providing accurate information so that maintenance work can take place on time, making optimum utilization resources, repending halt in the production process by eliminating sudden breakdowns and failure, and lastly, carrying out maintenance tasks within the allocated time. The benefits of maintenance management system is improving maintenance planning sharing work updates and progress report, taking prompt action against breakdown and failures, making efficient utilization resources, increasing the production of capacity of the organization, and keeping the organization updated about the requirements of maintenance. Here are the procedures of maintenance management design. The following are the common steps that every organization undertakes to design its maintenance management system. One is the maintenance audit, strategy development, organization of input, output formation, and records keeping. So the next topic is the topic total productive maintenance. TPM is an approach that encompasses the concept of total quality management into the practice of preventive maintenance. It aims at zero breakdown or zero downtime through employee involvement and excellent maintenance records. The main aim of the TPM is to eliminate losses caused by sudden breakdowns and failures in a production plant. This is done by identifying the causes of breakdowns and failures through teamwork consensus building, and continuous improvement. The following are the sum of the prerequisites of TPM. 
restoring the performance of equipment at a level of its maximum capacity, having operators who are involved in the task of maintenance of equipment and machines, improving the efficiency and effectiveness of the maintenance program, training the staff members to improve their skills required for maintenance work, making an effective use preventive maintenance technique. The implementation of TPM requires the commitment for all the employees working at different levels of management. The following are the three important aspects of TPM. Total workforce involvement, total effectiveness of equipment resulting in zero breakdowns, total preventive maintenance throughout the production process. It can be said that TPM is a maintenance system that aims at optimizing the productive capacity of equipment used in manufacturing operations through total participation of workforce. So we, this, I would like to give an idea regarding the evolution of total productive maintenance. In ancient times, there was a little scope of maintenance as organizations were reluctant to spend financial and human resources for the maintenance tasks. The organization used to follow the trend of taking corrective actions after the breakdown has taken place. Gradually, people working at production plants started realizing the importance of preventing breakdowns. This led to the evolution of preventive maintenance for fixing up breakdowns and failures at production plants. Later, the concept of preventive maintenance was replaced by productive maintenance. The practice of productive maintenance integrates preventive maintenance with along with equipment reliability, engineering, equipment maintenance, and replacement analysis. However, in productive maintenance, only a technician or engineer was responsible for maintenance tasks. As a step ahead of productive maintenance, the concept of TPM can co came into existence. TPM lays emphasis on the involvement of people in the maintenance work at all levels of organ organization. In this way, TPM made everyone responsible for the productive maintenance work in the plant irrespective of their designation in the organization. The evolution of TPM has been a controversial issue for so many years. This is because some believe that the concept of TPM was first used in the 1960s in Japan by Nipponess, a supplier of electrical parts to Toyota. On the other hand, certain evidences reveal that the term TPM was coined by American manufacturers. Objective of Total Productive Maintenance Main objective of TPM is improving the production capacity of a plant. Increasing the efficiency and effectiveness of maintenance program, eliminating sudden breakdowns and failures of machines and equipment, making all employees to participate actively in routine maintenance activities, facilitating a defect free, accident free, and breakdown free production environment, and lastly, making optimum utilization of productive resources. TPM focuses also on improving the maintenance activities. Uh, it has six parameters to improve the overall all productivity of production plant, which is the productivity, quality, cost, delivery, safety, morale. So TPM also reduces waste, thereby achieving overall effectiveness. There are three major categories of organizational waste, which are caused due to six different reasons. Time loss in correcting equipment failure and sudden breakdowns, time loss in setup and adjustment of equipment before operations, machine idle time and temporary stoppage of operation due to abnormal functionality of sensors or blockage of work, Reduction in the pace of operations due to inconsistency between plan and actual speed of equipment. Defective process of 
due to scrap fall of quality and unreliable repair reduction in the yield due to life cycle cost of a machine or equipment TPM outlines the following guideline, uh, outlines the following guiding principles that help in preventing waste in a production plant. These are prevention of overproduction, prevention of excess inventory, prevention of loss of productive hours, prevention of delayed time and loss of cycle time, prevention of breakdowns, and prevention of loss in process capacity. According to TPM, there are three parameters to measure the overall efficiency of machines and equipment. These are the uptime proportion, which represent time for which a machine or equipment is available when required. Speed of operations, which refer to the time required by a machine or equipment to complete its desired operation. And lastly, proportion of quality output, which refers to one of the important parameters of measuring the overall efficiency of a machine or equipment. Mathematically, the overall equipment efficiency of a machine can be expressed as follows. Overall equipment efficiency is equals to the percentage of uptime times percentage of cycle time times percentage of output quality. TPM is based on eight pillars. These are the 5S model, Autonomous Maintenance, Tizen, Plan Maintenance, Quality Maintenance, Training of Personnel, Total Productive Maintenance Department, Safe and Healthy Work Environment. The 5S models involves sort out, systematize, sweep, standardize, and self-discipline. Sort out involves arranging items based on the frequency of their usage in the maintenance work, while systematize involves determining the place for each item which is, should be kept. Generally, items are given codes, nameplates, and tags that they can easily be picked up whenever required. Once the usage of a particular item is over, it should be kept back to its place. Sweep which involves keeping the workplace clean, tidy, on a continuous basis. Cleanliness of work implies make it free from dust, grease, burst, and scrap. This helps in maintaining a systematized workplace. Standardized involves in establishing mutually agreed standards, keeping the workplace, machines, and pathways clean among all the employees. Self-discipline involves self-determination of employees towards the four S. Employees themselves should feel responsible towards following the determined standards and maintaining punctual. Autonomous maintenance refers to a type of maintenance that is done by only those people who operate machines or equipment. The effectiveness of autonomous maintenance depends on the skills and efficiency of, of, of operators. Autonomous maintenance involves activities such as lubrication, cleaning, inspection, and repair. It aims at achieving maximum operational equipment efficiency, thereby increasing the productivity of an organization. Kaizen, which refers to a Japanese philosophy that involves in changing to improve. The philosophy lays emphasis on zero losses, continuous improvement of overall plant effectiveness, and cost reduction. Nowadays, Kaizen has become an established management concept. 
Here are the five concepts of Kaizen philosophy. Teamwork, self-discipline, high moral, quality concern, suggestion for improvement. Plan maintenance. Aims at maintaining trouble-free machine, machines and equipment so as to minimize defects in the production system. Quality maintenance focuses on maintaining machines and equipment under good operating condition so that the desired quality of output can be derived. To do so, an organization needs to analyze the vital component of machines or equipment. This analysis is followed by a replacement, adjustment, or redesign of these components to ensure the highest quality of output. In this way, quality maintenance performs quality assurance instead of quality control. Training of personnel. The training program related to work maintenance work should focus on developing the knowledge and skill of personnel, facilitate an environment of self-learning, include an appropriate curriculum, tools, and measure of assessment, and also develop the interest of employers, employees toward learning. Total Productive Maintenance Department. This aims at improving administrative action taking for maintenance. The TPM department is responsible for supervising maintenance practices and identifying loopholes. Moreover, the department has to prevent losses during the production process. These losses can be as follow. Loss of operations, loss of costs, loss of information sharing, loss of idle time, loss of setup and adjustment, loss of quality, loss cost due to the breakdown of equipment, loss of availability of equipment and materials, loss due to delays in delivery. And lastly, safe and healthy work environment. This aims at preventing accidents, health damages, and productivity loss. For maintaining a safe and healthy work environment, an organization should keep a constant check that it works place in undamaged due to leakage of oil, scattering of wires, and breakout of fires. Some organizations also conduct safety quizzes and fire drills to make their employees aware about potential accidents and safety measures. There are three key terms on this topic which I get is the deterioration which refer to the harm caused on asset due to usual wear and tear. And the second key term is the breakdown, which refers to the failure of a machine or equipment that hampers the production process. And lastly, reliability, which refers to the probability how efficiently a machine or equipment can be formed. Before I end, I end a quote, which is a building with good operations and maintenance practices that is poorly designed will often outperform a well-designed building with poor operations and maintenance practices. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sir Christian, for that uh, comprehensive report. Uh, again, I think it's uh, raining hard here in e. Rodriguez. Uh, I might uh, this be disconnected, but hopefully not. Now, we discussed three important uh, topics for today, and um, I will synthesize these topics once the other three topics are already done uh, discussing. So what we're going to do today is uh, I will dismiss you guys, and uh, to do, uh, I will give time, probably five, seven minutes to our international students, uh, if you have no questions, you may do so. Again, as a reminder, we are going to meet next week and continue our discussion with our three succeeding uh, reporters. Okay? Now, uh, to those who are um, not yet familiar in terms of their presentation, you may always ask in our group chat. So again, before we end, uh, uh, 
on November 12, site selection and uh, people on work system by Miss Lovely and Mr. Ravider. Just in time and supply chain management by Miss Lisa and Donna, and then inventory for dependent and independent demand. And then uh, I would like to ask uh, my students, international students, to stay. And the rest of you, you may uh, do, you may go and uh, sign out. Enjoy your weekend. God bless everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good report sa mga uh, reporters. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before we before we go, let's have a picture taken. A picture, picture. Okay. Uh, if if you can open your camera. Hello, Wendy. Wendy is riding in the car right now. Be safe. Be safe, Wendy. Okay, so okay, thank you. Open your camera and uh, Miss Aimi, Mr. Singh, and Mr. Haji San, open your camera so we can have a short documentation. Okay, uh, in count of three one, two, three. Okay, perfect. So, uh, Bye, let me share this later and uh, see you next week. For my international students, please stay put. We will have a quick, uh, uh, quick discussion only regarding your subject or your topics. Okay, so let us wait for the rest to log out. Okay, okay. Let's just save this. Uh, it's called uh, MB O nine eleven O five twenty twenty. Okay, um, to my dear students who are here, uh, welcome, Mr. Favor Laka, finally. <laughs> so, uh, um, you are now part of our group chat, so if, if ever you are, uh, yes, Paul. you can, you can always, uh, you can always refer. Now, um, I think, uh, Mr. Haji San, uh, will. I already gave you the report. Your presentation would be your company because Mr. Haji San is an entrepreneur. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So uh, in, let us uh, schedule Mr. Haji San to present his paper or his uh, company on November 19. Is that okay, sir? Uh, okay. So, what topic? Should I prepare? You're uh, do you, you're you're an entrepreneur in China, right? Yes. Okay. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna tell something about your business, your company. What is your product? What is your service uh, offering? How long? Who are your clients? Who are your target market? And then probably just give something about your operation, and then from there. We can discuss uh, some relevant information about your company. Okay, okay. Do you have, uh, just present some pictures of your products, uh, services. Uh, if you have some videos, that will be better. But if not, it's okay. Okay. Okay, so that's, that's, that's your, that's your uh, assignment, company or your business, okay? Okay, so professor, should I assign my PPT to you? Assign? Uh, handing my PPT to you. Yes, you can uh, send it to me, and then uh, uh, during the day you can just uh, discuss, and then we, I will assist you on your paper or on your presentation. Okay, so should I hand in my? through email before November 19. Okay, that will be better. Okay. Okay. Now let's go to uh, Zhang Lin. Zhang Lin, you are Lisa. Your your English name is Lisa. Is it correct? Yes, go ahead with Zhang Lin. Go ahead. No, I already have my um, poll, the topic. I will present it the next meeting. Yes, that is uh, just in time and uh, supply chain management, correct? 
So I I, I have a question. Is on uh, uh, is I uh, only the topic is just in time because Donna have do the supply chain management. Uh, yes, yes. Your topic okay. is just in time. Would okay. you like to report next week or November nineteen? Uh, I I can re re I can report the next week. Okay, okay, so I will not adjust your schedule. So next week, uh, you are going to report just in time. Correct. Yes. Very good. Now let's go to uh, Charlie Zhang. Miss Zhang, do you already have a report or not yet? Uh, still doing it. But what's the topic? What's the what's the topic of your paper? Topic. Uh, uh, I will send you later. Okay, so your schedule will be on November nineteen. Okay. Okay, sure. Very good. Now let's go to Wendy. Wendy, do you have a subject or you have a topic already or not yet? Uh, maybe I will use the uh, travel energy uh, management and uh, op op operation. It's okay. Yeah, that's very good. Will that uh, will November nineteenth be a good date for you? Uh, how about uh, November twenty six? Would you like to have November twenty six? Okay, uh -huh. I will put. I will put you on November twenty six. Okay, no worries. And I think, uh, yeah. Wendy, what's your topic again? I will send you later. Okay. Now uh, you will be presenting November twenty six, and then let's go to the last, Mister Laka. I think uh, it's best if you can report on November twenty six, so to give you more time. Would you Would you agree? Okay, Paul. Um, okay. What would be my topic to report? Uh, do you have any preference in terms of product and operations? If you don't have, uh, let me give you a topic in our group chat. Will that be okay with you? What? What? what, okay. what um, give me until tomorrow, but at the same time, you can look at some of the topics of product and operation management. And if you are, uh, if you are interested then uh, you can have your own topic, like what Miss Wendy did. Oh, this is a very good topic. Management and operations of travel agency. Very good. I like that. So I'll put it here, November 26. And then, um, so Mr. Laka, uh, either I can suggest some topics. Uh, let's, let's finalize it tomorrow. And then once you chose your topic, he can uh, present it on November 26, which is uh, three weeks from now. You have more time. Okay, Paul. Okay. Um, Paul, I sent you some of like the assignments, like the ones I missed out on. Yes, yes. You received it. Yes, okay. uh, I received it. Thank you. Wait for my response. Um, if it's uh, if it's missing. Then I will let you know. Uh, I will ask you to resend again. But uh, thank you. At least we already have the communication. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Laka. So I think that's about it, guys. Uh, everyone, except for Lisa, will be presenting on November 12th next week. The rest, Kali Zhang, Haji San, November 19th, Wendy Wu, Favor Laka, November 26. And then we have asynchronous and then presentation of your paper. Now, uh, next week, we can discuss if you have some problems on how to do your concept paper. Okay? Uh, yeah, I don't know much about the consent paper. Like The concept paper is uh, okay. it's more about uh, your topic if you want to do your topic. But um, if you want to get to know more about the concept paper, the first thing that we need to do is watch the video uh, dated October 15. Now, uh, we, we discuss a lot of information, but if you don't understand after you watch October 15, we can have a separate uh, meeting like this so I can focus more on your questions. Okay, okay. Okay. But for so the, the meantime, the okay. Sorry. Yeah. For the meantime, I want you to look at the finished product. The watch the video, 
And if those two items did not uh, meet your understanding of concept paper, we will have a separate discussion so I can uh, clearly uh, address your question. Okay, Bo. Okay. So our classes is every Saturday, not every two weeks? No, uh, for, for this November, next week, we're going to meet. And then two weeks from now, we're going to meet. On the third Saturday, we will have a single news. Okay, okay. Uh, don't Thank worry. You. I will uh, remind everyone so no one will be confused. All right. So okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, be safe. Uh, I will give the link for this uh, for this schedule so you can watch again if you want to uh, uh, have some references and uh, documentation purposes okay uh, until now thank you guys god bless thank you bye bye yeah, thank you bye 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 bye, -bye. professor i have yes, a question I, yeah yeah go ahead miss aji chan uh, you just share a link about a YouTube movie, that's, so it's a it's a reference for the final paper. No, 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 no. Um, we discussed the layout design earlier, right? Yes. And the link that I sent is just a trailer, but uh, there's actually a a whole movie. Uh, let me just check if it's available in YouTube. But at present. It is uh, available okay. in Netflix. The title of the movie is The Founder. It's the story of McDonald's. And for us to appreciate the importance of, uh, importance of uh, design, you should watch that movie. But there will be no output. Just watch and appreciate. Okay, okay. And then, uh, Ms. Zhang, do you have any question? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Ms. Zhang. Yes, sir. Go ahead, go ahead. What's your question? Uh, could you be my advisor for my theater? For my for your theater. I will send you email for my paper, so for your other ones. Okay. Uh let me see. What's what's the topic of your paper? Uh, about the uh, discussion for beauty introductory. Okay, just send me the paper. I will take a look at it. I will read. Is this your uh, thesis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, thesis. Okay, I'll take a look at it. Uh, this is my email address. Let me, uh, do you know my email address? Yeah, yeah, I know your email address. I will send you. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so, Professor? Yes, Miss? Uh, will you talk about more details about final paper in the yes. next week? Yes. Um, before you leave, uh, Miss uh, Hadjusan, can you send me, uh, let me just um, send you the links in YouTube so you can uh, have a reference. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is watch that video and then if you have uh, difficulty understanding the instruction, let me know. We are going to have a separate meeting so I can discuss your questions or, or your inquiries uh, more specifically, okay? Okay. But, now, but for now, try to, try to watch the video. Very, very easy to understand. But uh, if you have some questions, please do not hesitate. Let me know. We can have this uh, short meeting and then we can discuss. Let okay. me just let, let me just first uh, check the video. Okay, the link. So I want to make sure that uh, you you have it. Okay. Okay. Let me do not do not leave the room yet. Uh, let okay. Me okay. I will stay here. Yes. Wait one moment. The internet is a little bit uh, slow because uh, currently, uh, as we speak, we do have a thunderstorm experiencing right now. So this is the this is the video that I'm referring to. 
Uh, I'll send you the link. Okay, this is the link. Uh, I will set, I will share it here right now. So, Mr. Favor, Laka, and the rest, uh, just watch the part where I discuss the the concept paper and write it down if you don't uh, if you have some questions and then we will have a separate meeting so i can uh, discuss in details okay Paul. okay so just okay. watch this first and then let me know if you need more time for me to discuss it in details okay I, i'm more than willing to uh share it again but uh i think uh with this video i think uh that that's uh, some of the things that we discuss here at uh, start um start at uh, 21 minutes and 30 seconds and i think that's the time that i started discussing the concept paper uh let me see and then um let me also share to you can you send me your email again here so I can also send uh, a finished product so you can see uh, exactly how it looks like. Okay, okay please wait a moment. Yes, uh, just uh, I'll wait for your uh, email address. Can you ty type it in the chat box? Okay, I will, I will tap here. Yes. Okay, I have uh, Mr. Laka. Let me uh, let me now send it just to make sure. Okay. Professor, I typed in the chat box. Okay, thank you. Yes, I, I see your email address. Now, let me just uh, share to you, and I want you to take a look at the... Wait, let me just uh, copy-paste your name. Here. Now, I will name it journal, okay? okay? And then here is the file. Now, let me just uh, take a look at my... Uh... It's... Uh... Here we go. Perfect. Wait, let me just. Let me see. Yeah, here we go. So you can see it's attaching. Now, before we go, let me just uh, show to you what it looks like and what to expect. So once you get your email, it is a PDF file. So it's called the Journal of Business Research and Development. Now, I want you to look only on Chapter 1, which is this one. The Internet of Things, let me just uh, zoom. Internet of Things, Reshaping Business, Jobs, Employees by Ramon Roque. Okay, now, this is how your uh, concept paper looks like. So let me just proceed to the article. Here. So the first part will be the abstract. But the abstract, this is the last thing that you will do because the abstract is like a trailer in a movie. It gives you 
uh, what the paper is all about. Now, you cannot yet write the abstract if you haven't started the paper. Now, normally the abstract has 150 to 200 words. So that's, that's how short it is. Okay? Now, look at first the title. Internet of Things, Reshaping Business, Jobs, and Employees. So in your case, you can choose any uh, any topics as, uh, and, uh, related to our subject, product and operation management. So maybe if you want, like uh, example, if you want to do a, lay, a layout design, you can put it here. Layout design impacts in 